Dum dum dum. Oh, I broke the door again. Oh.
So, this is, um, what is this? This is RKDM Dagdagiel episode, what episode are we at when we're starting this? We're streaming... It should be seven. Seven. So we're streaming for the first time, starting with episode seven. Thank you. Um, we don't have any fancy titles or anything right now, but, um, <clears throat> we will see how we go. Anyhow, um, one of our players, Charlie, is not going to be joining us for about half an hour, or a little bit more than that, so we have elected to send her character back to the township of... Dun 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 dun, I'll tell hey, you. There you go. No. The village of Durden, oh, right. Durden yeah. Tal. Yeah. Um, she's gone back there with Mira. Um, to keep Mira safe, presumably. Um, and she will return later. So presently, you guys are standing... Um, let's go to our map. Um, let's see, where is our map? Here it is. Okay. So you guys are presently um, by the campsite that you found. And you found a number of uh, bits of evidence. Would you like to, uh, you know, uh, tell us about a bit of a recap, perhaps? Now's a good time for us to introduce ourselves and our characters. Why don't we start with Jojo? Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I'm playing Alexander Cordana. I am a uh, male so the the um, what's this? sorcerer. Um, You're a sorcerer. A sorcerer. Yeah. I'm a sorcerer. You don't deal with sources. Um, I deal with sources. Yeah. Um, I am playing about forty-five years old. Uh, I I'm quite spindly and quite um, kind of uh, Merliny, if that makes any sense to everyone. Yep. Um, so it's the Merlin I archetype. Do very well. <clears throat> It's the Merlin archetype. He's a little bit of a trickster too, I, I feel. There's a little bit of that trickster energy like going on there as well. Yeah. Okay. Ba there. Barry, who are you playing? You're a Rokan uh, tonight, isn't it? I am Rokan the Orc. Right. And you're a uh, ranger, aren't you? Yes, I'm a ranger and I'm big and muscly with uh, lots of fur on me, literally. Uh, as my armor and stuff like that. Right, because you actually m kill and, you know, trap and kill animals and make furs and sell them in Dagdagiel. Yeah. Amongst other yeah. things. And you've been, you've left your homelands of Angor Ma'ak and you've traveled from the Orkan homelands, having done your pilgrimage, and now you find yourself in the um, domain of Dagdagiel, the free city of. Yes, yes, and, um, it's been a wonderful experience. I've learned that um, elves might not be as, as... On the other hand, they might be as bad as I think they are, but I'm trying to be uh, open-minded. Right, fair enough. So uh, no, or, yeah. no eating elves or halflings for the moment? No, no, even though their ears do look juicy. Right, that's fair enough. They could be quite crisped, couldn't they? Yeah. I imagine. Uh, and uh, Alexander might get upset, and so might the rest of my team if I do that. Right. So, Sean, how about you? What about you? How did you get into all of this? Yes, um, I'm Sean, and I'm playing Alcas, the half elf rogue slash barbarian. Um, always quick and ready for a good fight, and every chance he get will try and lie his way out of any situation. Right. And he's kind of just been roped in for the money at this point. Roped he's in for the money. money. He, earns, he can gamble and drink it away. Right. And you are working with health, head of health, House Kaelrin um, of yes. Dagdagiel, um, whom our sorcerer friend, played by Jordan, that is to say Alex, the top left, um, he is uh, one of the main servants of that house. Um, working in a kind of investigatory capacity um, for the steward Regan, Lord Regan, to be fair. Okay, um, and our new player, Keith. Um, I hope I'm allowed to say your name on the stream. 
Yeah, it's, too, it's too late now. You're fucked. <laughs> Everybody knows they're going to dox you. No, just kidding. Um, oh, crap. Yeah. Um, so who are you playing? Tell us about yourself. Uh, yeah, so uh, as uh, Russell just said, my name is Keith. I'm the new guy to the group. Um, yeah. I'm playing a male wood elf called Aldalmador Mithrath. But everyone just calls me Aldam because it's easier. And we, we get our tongues <laughs> um, twisted quite easily. Oh yeah, it, it, become, it becomes fun when I try and pronounce my name. Um, but yeah, so I've, uh, I've, my character is on a quest to reclaim a heirloom for their family, and on the way has found himself in Dagdagil and is now journeying with the rest of the guys and their characters. Right. Okay, so the general setup here, as far as the storyline's concerned at this point, is we've had a couple of little misadventures with some of our players as we sort of created our core group, and as we've attracted players, the story's progressed deeper into Dagdagiel. And at this point, the story is largely about House Kaelrin, um, who occupy one of the many fortress towers in the city that line these many walls. It's a f there are five walls, massive massive walls in Dagdagiel. And so you're um, working together presently to investigate an undead situation whereby you've gone to the township of uh, the village, should I say, of Durdan Tal'al, um, which is mostly a human village, a small human farming community, in fact. It barely constitutes a village. It's more of a hamlet, but, but it does have a tavern. Um, and you've met a few people there including the tavern keepers and what have you and you've Are talked you to right? them i'm just gonna mute you barry um so you're on mute barry just so you know um and what else do we know uh you met mira the girl who claims to have seen a bunch of undead or something to that effect out in the forest and you've followed her instructions after some uh some scally wagging and some uh, other shenanigans um, in the town, and now you're out in the woods, in a marsh, having defeated five odd skeletons in the in the swamplands. Um, and at this point, Vespera, played by Charlie, who'll be with us later, um, has turned away with Mira, and they've headed back to the township with some explanation, essentially that, you know, she wants to look after the girl, and she'll be back. Um, at this point, the rest of you have been left at the campsite, which is where the map is in Roll20 presently. Um, anybody who wants to share the map is welcome to. It's your game. Over to you. <clears throat> now, bear in mind, T is timeout. So, what we do now? I think we follow these tracks, just for a little while, that you right. can. Okay. Alright. So you're going to head off along some tracks that you've found from, um, you believe it to be two humanoids um, heading in a particular direction north um, into the trees beyond. Um, and looking ahead you see the forest grows a bit heavier, it gets a bit colder, um, night is falling. Well, actually, night is not falling because you got up at dawn for this whole raid, didn't you? Um, so night is not falling. Night is falling away, in fact, as the sun, the first of the two suns, Solemn Pingal, hits the horizon, casting a pink hue across the landscape. Um, mm -hmm. You can see little patches of ice around that have formed and spots of snow um, as it gets colder heading in this direction now. You're heading up the mountainside, and you come over the hill into another valley on the other side, and you begin to head down into the next valley. Um, can you make perception checks, please? Uh, 16 for me, and... 15 for me. So I should be looking up on D&D &D Beyond for this. Okay, so... Uh, I am seeing... Rokan rolled a 20, Al Dalmador rolled a 15, Alex rolled a 16, and Alcas a 4. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so... Some bugs swimming around. 
Alcas, you're yeah, you're noticing the bugs and they're they're getting in your face. Um, Alexander, you and Aldalmador, and especially Rokan, um, you see something of a small pillar of smoke uh, trailing up between some trees, heading to the north, up beyond the next valley. Mm. See that? Yes, it looks like smoke. Mm-hmm. Should we should we go investigate or? I think we should uh, go and investigate, but we'll do it stealthily. Okay. Yeah. Good call. Good call. Just in case there's trouble ahead. I will stealth. Is that the plan? Seems <laughs> mm-hmm. like the plan. Stealth. Yep. Stealth. Yep. Stealth. Yep. Bugs. <laughs> what, what are we looking at? The s- smoke. Oh. The smoke <clears> over, <throat> over in that direction. Uh, if you ignore the bugs, they'll ignore you. Come on, Alcas, oh. get it together. I can't ignore them when they're flying up my nose. <laughs> if you don't lift them up your nose, they won't bite you. Okay, so what, we why not? Us. Why not eat fly? Just eat fly. Waste, you know, waste. Oh, not I had food. I had enough protein for breakfast already. How? Just so, so we're going to stealth up to this fire, this camp. Yes, yeah, yeah. Seems like the best idea. Yes. Okay. And is the party planning to do this as a group? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. We will be helping each other. Okay. Yes. So you're going to help each other to stealth forward. Okay. Is anybody wearing any heavy armor? Uh, no, I've got light. Um, okay. No. So, is there any reason why anybody would have disadvantage on this stealth check? No. No? Okay, send us bugs. No? Okay, no, that's fair. Um, <clears throat> in which case, if you're all helping each other, you're walking forward and uh, Rokan and Alcas are probably pointing to places. Oh, mind you, you're a... Uh, what are you again, Aldalmado? You're a, you're a rogue, so you're pretty yes. good at this too. Okay, so you guys have a bit of expertise in your party, and so between you, you're pointing to the places to go. You show each other the signals that you need to use for this. Um... So, henceforth, I feel that if you wish to work together stealthing, you will all get advantage on this roll. So I'll get an advantage check from everyone, please. With stealth, obviously. Twenty-five. Twenty-five, crikey dick. (coughs) Okay, Uh, Alcas, was that with advantage? Yes, it was. Okay, fourteen, all right. And Rokan 14, also Rokan is 14. Well. Okay. Um, hmm, all right. Well, it's not terrible. Um, <clears throat> so you move through the trees, and as you approach, um, you see that there is a campsite um, further down into the next valley. And about the campsite, you see, first of all, uh, basically a, a makeshift tent that has been set up. And around it is a small structure that's currently being built by two lumbering figures. Um, humanoid figures that seem to be carrying planks of wood, you notice immediately that they have torn strips of cloth hanging from their gaunt forms as they carry these pieces of timber from some smashed older structure and begin placing it into a formation around the tent, uh, trying to sort of reinforce it and build a little bit more of a shelter. Inside you can see uh, firelight coming out from inside the tent and you can see the silhouette of two figures within. Okay. Um, how close are we to them? What distance? Uh, presently, I'm thinking about 120 feet. But okay. you're, in the, you're in the trees, you're in the tree line, you're in the forest. Um, can I see what color uh, like the robes the uh, people lifting the wood are wearing? Uh, they're not wearing robes so much as uh, hessian cloth. Um, they look like they would have been. They might be peasants or mm-hmm. farmers or something like that. They look quite agricultural. This is well off the beaten path as well. Eh? It's not like yeah. Yeah, it's not like it's near a path or road or anything. No, nothing like that. It's in the. It's deep in the woods. 
d deep in the woods, and it's getting pretty cold here. Um, I feel, I feel the, 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 the best thing that we can do now is just watch and see what they do. Uh, try not to give away our position at all. I think the best option. All right. Mm, what? Do, we, do we see a donkey? Do you see a donkey? Um, is there a donkey? You know what? There might well be a donkey. That's a great I just idea. The previous camp that we've come from, there was a donkey noted to be there. Ah, well, excellent. Thank you. Yes, there was a there. Yes, good point. You can have inspiration for for remembering this fine detail and accessing oh, your notes. I lost mine. <laughs> there you go. Hey, Vancouver mm. by night is here. Nice. Awesome. Woot woot. Thank you for coming. So, uh, yeah, moving right along. What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. So you do see a donkey at the camp ahead through the trees. These are these are tall, straight trees, quite narrow trees, not big oak trees or anything like that. There are a few of those bigger trees amongst here, but um, most of these trees are quite tall and skinny. Um, and Why as... Sorry. Why don't we move up a little bit more so we can hear if they're saying anything? I think that may be a good idea. Mm, I agree. Alright, so you I want to agree. make another stealth check with advantage? Uh, natural 20 for me. Nice. 23. 23 for you, nice. 14. 14, okay, and Rokan, 21. <laughs> Wow. That's the orc more stealthy than you. <laughs> he's, a, he's a ranger, to be fair. He is a fair ranger, enough. but still. I'm, I'm very much a rogue of the cities. Being out in the wilderness isn't my thing. Right, fair call. All right, so moving along, um, you, you get up a lot closer to, to the camp now. You're about 60 feet. Um, can we hear anything? You can make perception checks, but it will be difficult because there is still 60-odd feet between you and them, and there's wind and other conditions. Um, there's the sound of cracking noises and banging as these um, figures, these gaunt figures, carry stuff. You're also beginning to notice an odour coming from this direction. Yeah, well, Roken and I are out. <laughs> we got 5 and uh, 11. 5 and 11. That is a 21. 21 for Alcas and uh, Alexander your perception was 15 I see is that right? Yeah, that's correct Okay, um, Alexander you can hear that they're talking but you can't hear so much about what they're talking about um, what you do hear is something about and Rokan you hear this too um, of course because you've got 21 Something uh, about Alcas got it. Sorry, oh, Alcas, you get this. Yes, uh, something about finish them. This is your final test before you can join us. I I turn to Alcas and go, "What do you hear?" Finish them. This is their f your final test before you can join our ranks. It sounds like this has all been some sort of initiation ceremony test of some kind. He's, sounds like they're on the last stage of it. Mm. So they're planning something. Can you hear who they're trying to finish? No, finish them, whatever that means. Them, so plural, more than one. This is... However, we know that they're bringing Thing. these are the guys well I'd assume these are the guys bringing people back to life so finishing them off may refer to finish off the resurrections do you want to make another perception check everybody yeah mm. I get another 23 another 21 uh, thank you for Charlie for chatting in chat even I'm though you're not here. She'll be here soon. Okay, what, what? Uh, right. Let's uh, see what you 23 you're... for me, 12 for Rokan, 15 for Alex, and 21 for Alcas. Okay, uh, 21 for Alcas. So Alcas and Aldalmador this time. Um, you overhear something about 
Will you leave the crystal with me? Yes, I shall leave you the crystal and the staff. You will need them for your final operations. Then, after you've left, I will meet you at the tower. Be prepared. We have seen them coming across the ice already. Very well. I shall meet you again soon, Master. Do we see anyone leave the tent? I was about to say, at that point, you see this individual step out of the tent. Um, clearly a wizard of the Barakile envoy, um, although he is now placing, uh, covering himself in black robes and tying up the, the knots and the belt and what have you. Can I see if I can see any features or any like facial features or anything like that? Uh, you can make an investigation check for that, I feel. Would it oh, be an advantage? Because I'm at, at a distance? Uh, what? You want to... Would it be at disadvantage because I'm at a distance? Um, no, it's just not at advantage because you're not using your scrying stone. Um, it doesn't work at this type of range. I don't see anything. I've got a nine. Nine, okay. Sadly, you can't tell. Yeah, nothing like that. Okay, you want I should shoot him? No, I think he's leaving. I think if we let him leave, we can then jump the other one and interrogate him further. Alcus is right. If we shoot him now, all it takes is... A, and the, the rest are alerted, so... Okay. Right, so what would you like to do? We we stay put, I think, and, and wait for All right. um, that individual to get further away. Very well. Um, he stands outside the tent, um, and he wipes the frost that's starting to gather on everything around where you are right now um, off his gloves, and he looks about, and he makes a call out to the side amongst the trees. He says something that you can't quite hear. It's almost like a howl, the noise that he makes. And then this undead horse rides in from the trees, fully tack and harnessed up, ready to go. And he climbs up on it, and he rides off. Leaves the camp, and he follows a trail, follows a trail to the northwest. If he's got an undead horse, he's more powerful. <clears throat> That's the problem. If he has an undead horse, he could be too powerful for us. Hmm. Okay. If he get to tell, he might be even more powerful. Now, before we go any further, because sometimes in Dungeons and Dragons, occasionally we run into fight scenes and combat, and I just like to be prepared in case these things happen. Um, I know it's very rare, but I'm going to get you to roll for initiative. I see uh, some of you have already began to roll. You know this routine a little bit too well. Twenty-one. Okay. All right. What do we got here? I haven't got one for Vespera because she's not here. That's fine. Um, I'm going to put her. Alexander. I'm going to roll her an unmodified d20 for her initiative. Oh fuck, a natural 20. Um, <laughs> Vespera, I have your character sheet around here somewhere. Here we go. V for Vespera. Um, her initiative is a plus three, so hers is a 23. Okay, I will keep that in mind. Now, 23. Oh, goodness me. Okay, cool. All right. So, um, <clears throat> what are you guys doing now? This guy's ridden off on this undead horse. Snow begins to fall between the trees down from the stars. It's a fairly clear sky, but there's some cloud up to your left, high above in the west. And from it, the sprinkling of, of fine crystalline snow is beginning to fall out of the sky, filling the air with this white motes of light I, I, first sun has fallen 
um, I say to the group, would you mind if I had a quick rest? Um, I am in need of it. I've got no issue why we can't have a short rest. All right. So you want to make a camp of your own and take a short rest, sort of adjacent to this camp here in the woods on the edge of the of the camp sort of site? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Do you want to make a uh, survival check, please? Certainly. That is a nine for me. All right. An eight. An eight for Rokan. Or one for Alcas. I, I, I'm going to use my inspiration. Okay, that sounds like a plan. Yeah, I would. All right, that's that's 17. Things. Okay, well, while the rest of them are thinking this is a great idea, Alcas, you realize that once the sun's come up, um, you guys are like 60 feet away from this guy's camp. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, the more light there will be, the easier it will be for them to just for him to just wake up and see you. Um so whether or not you want to camp quite this close to the enemy, so to speak, is up to you. But um, the the two I'm not gonna like, stop here. shambling figures that were working around outside. Yeah. Did they they didn't leave with the horseback guy? They're still around. They're still here. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So we could take them if we wanted to. Hmm. Hmm. Well, while we're deciding what to do, sorry, while we're deciding what to do, um, Al, uh, Aldem looks over to Alcas while everyone is starting to, you know, think about prepping for camp, and he sees that he's quite nervous or unsure, and so he goes, Alcas, is everything all right? We're awfully close, I think. Should we wish to rest, we should move. A little bit further away, over the next hill, maybe. As all he has to do is come out of the tent and look up, and once that sun's up, he'll see us directly. Actually, you've got a good point there. What right. do you What do you think, Alex? I'm sort of already rolling out my bed roll on my bow. I think that's a good idea, and I start rolling my bed roll back out, all right. looking at it longingly, just going, "I need to rest. I need to rest." Fair yeah. enough. Okay, so you guys decide then to move the camp a little further away. That's the general gist of it. Yeah, how, that's the plan, yes. how far do you want to be, and and do you want to describe to me your campsite between you? Hmm. You are the collaborative storytellers here. Tell me about the campsite. Where do you sleep? What? Basic. Yep. I think it's quite basic, just because we're not planning to stay long. Yeah. Right. It's kind of just the case of um, put down bedroll, have a bit of a snooze or a um, you know, forty minute wink, and then get back up. Right. So we're talking about a short rest. Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So it's an hour short rest in the forest. No fires. Nothing like that. Nothing. I think maybe looking for like a fallen tree or something to just have a sit down next to. Or okay. On. That sounds good. Like a fallen log. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. cool. Okay. That's cool. All right, so you take your short rest behind the fallen log, and after about an hour, you feeling some of you at least are feeling much better. Um, what would you like to do at that point? I think we should. Um... You can still smell this foul air coming from down uh, upwind from where you are. What does it, what does it smell like? Oh, it smells rank, like death. I, 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 think, I think for the town's sake and everyone that we've met so far, this may, this seems like the, the place that everything is emanating from. So what do you guys think? Should we in, in, in investigate and see what happens? Or I think... Do these two shambling uh, figures appear to be similar to the skeletons we've already fought? Uh, well, they're not skeletons. That's the difference. They, okay. they, they, they actually have, you know, corpulence to them. They have meat on them. They're not skeletons. Well. So, so what we, what we so know is this. Sorry, you go. Oh, so far, the things that we've come up against 
have been relatively easy to take down. There's only two of them that look like essentially manual labor to help set up the uh, camp. That just leaves us with the one who we have no know nothing about, and we're not going to know anything about him until we confront him. I, I agree with you on that. I think we Maybe. push forward. Well, what what we what we know so far is there also might be people in there still alive. We we can't we can't just leave them as well. We we could set up a ambush of sorts. I don't know. Alexander, maybe from a range you can set the tent on fire. I I can certainly give it a go. Sounds like a plan to me. Have others in position ready to jump in while that's happening? Yeah. Uh, well, the question is, no, we've we've remember we've we've moved camp. So what distance are we now? We went from sixty feet. So what are we now? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. How, I'm, I'm thinking at least 300 to 400 feet from, from where you were, maybe even 500 feet. How far would you like to be? I think 500 feet sounds reasonable. Okay. We're a fair distance away just to make sure that we're not spotted. Mm. So that makes all of our bows pretty much useless. So if we were to try and set this tent on fire, would fall down to you. Well, presumably you could move in too. That would be another option. You could move in yeah, from true. your campsite. You don't have to leave everybody at the campsite. It just depends. Are we going in hostile or do we want to go in and try to talk it out first okay. before resulting to violence? I don't really think these are the kind of creatures or humanoids to do talking. <laughs> No, but from what we are uh, know so far, this this person might be a member of House Kaelrin. We have a representative of House Kaelrin right here. That may grant us some level of discussion. Well, I guess if, any, if if it does go south, at least we can be prepared and ready for a fight. So don't don't you worry. I'm always ready for a fight. That's the problem. <laughs> um, to get to the the enemy's camp, as it were. Yeah. Um, how how like is how is it situated? How is it situated? Um, okay, so do ba do ba do ba do. This is a great question. Um, where's my roll stream gone? My thingy. Okay. Um, basically, let's uh, go over to roll twenty. And I'll stick you on the on a map. I'm going to draw on this map. Um, if you want to share this up while I'm drawing, that could be amusing. So people can just see how I make shit up as I go along. Even though I did do a lot of prep on this particular story tonight. Um, okay, map. Okay, um, where you are now is what you're talking about. You want a campsite? Is or campsite. you want you want their campsite basically is the kind of idea. Um, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, we just need to know what uh, like what's in between our campsite and their campsite. So like what terrain and stuff. Right. Like, okay. So while Russell is doing this, I see you're yeah. a man of culture there, Alex. Yeah. Oh, yes, I am. Good old James May. <laughs> uh, yes, good old James, James May. Okay. Uh... No more. <laughs> This is the tent. Um, here is the structure that they're building out of wood. Another one out of wood. Um, 
And what else do you need? Uh, we need some figures, don't we? Yeah. Okay. So two, two humanoid, I think you said, like, figuring, figures, well, like, they're, one's, they're tall and one's, teams, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just give me a second to load these up. Let's see how we go. Cynical, hey, nice to see you here. First time in. Cool, okay. Uh, what do we got here? Da, da, da. Well, free assets. Okay, we're going to use free assets because we are cheap and poor. Um, here we go, try again. Guys, need to go to there. Not to that grounds. Well, that's a big boy. Right, he's a bit, little bit oversized, and now I've got two of them because D and D Beyond's a bit slow. Okay, hold on a second. That's in the wrong. Ah! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Place, cool. Okay, cool. All right, so there you go. This is basically the camp, um, and we want two other guys. One over here. One over here. Um, there we go. And they're just moving, shuffling things around. There's. Uh, various trees and things around you too at the moment so keep that in mind um, I may even draw one for you over here there you go that's how close the trees get to this little campsite okay so what would you like to do ladies and gentlemen boys and girls Barry, can you see the map? Yeah, I can see the map. Cool. I will. I signal to the guys that I'll take the. See that guy by the real close to the tree there? That's not us. Yep. Uh, that one, Barry? No, that next one down below. That one, yes. I'll work my way round and come up behind him. Okay. Okay. Alrighty. Um, so you're going to work your way around and come up behind him. So yeah. basically, uh, Rokan is going to move down here. Try and get around behind the tree. Yeah. Use the cover as much as I can. Okay, so I'm going to need a stealth check for that. Um, you do not have advantage because nobody can help you with this. No one can help you. Um, uh, rolls a 22. Jeez. Rolls a nice. 22. Okay, you get up behind him. Um, this ghoul, this nasty undead creature you discover as you get closer. Okay. Um, yep. So, while yeah. he's doing this, can I do the same thing, just with the one at the top? Sure can. You see, you see him start doing it and you move off ahead so you can make a stealth check. I think I trip and fall on my face. Oh dear. Seven. Okay, well, with your seven, um, I'm going to make a perception check. Um, oh well. Okay, well, remarkably, nobody notices you. Remarkably. <clears throat> I think uh, you with realize that stealth check, I probably get up to behind this tree and yep. realize I'm not being too stealthy and stop them. Right, that's fair. Okay. Fair enough. Fair um, enough. Yeah, I, I, I see um, Alcas move up ahead and stop and uh, decide to basically follow him as well. So, like, 
just behind him. So I'll just go, that's not the right one. So I just go about there by myself. Hello Joe, how are you? Who's there? Oh wow, hello. Madame Lazuli's here, that's awesome. Um, okay, so you move up to the tree, um, Al Dalmador, um, and you're behind Alcas. So Al Dalmador, you better make a stealth check too, I think. No worries. We have a ten. A ten, okay. Um, all right. I better make another perception check. Okay, well, as you're moving up to the tree, Al Dalmador, uh, this guy sees you. Does. Yes, and he begins moving in your direction. Now, uh, at this point, um, he lets out this groaning noise, and you see immediately movement in the tent um, behind. Suddenly, from your left, um, a war horse comes firing out of nowhere. An undead oh. war horse just comes chasing into the area that you're in. Um, and it is attacking Alcas. Um, Whoops. Alcas, what's your armor class? Uh, 17. 17, okay, well, that's a 14. Um, so it misses. Um, another war horse comes in from the other direction simultaneously as that. Um, and it is attacking Rokan. Uh, AC for Rokan. It's a 14. It's a 14. Does not hit you, Rokan. Okay. Um, it is Aldelmador's turn. No. <laughs> Um, okay, so not only have we not only have we got the original uh, three things, now we've got two war horses on the field, right? That is correct. Uh, can we possibly have some icons for the war horses? Sure can. Um, I'm been trying to organise those. Okay, so here's a war horse. I'm going to give it a colour so that it's different. Uh, Okay. Uh, yep. Copy, paste. <laughs> okay. All right. So this one's come in here and it's swiped at you. This one is coming uh, for Rokan from over this side. Okay. Cool. Everybody clear? Yep, sweet as. Okay. Mm. So uh, Al Delmador, it is your turn. Okay, um, I will, let's have a look, so where are those trees? So I will move down here, um, in between Elkis and Alex, and I will, uh, decide to shoot my bow at it. Alright, so you're firing at this guy, right? Yeah, the, the, the wars. Okay, cool. Roll two hit. So we have a 25. 25 to hit. Okay, one moment. Uh, 25 to hit. That's definitely a hit. Let's have it's, some damage, please. That's a nat 20. That was yeah. a nat 20? Okay, so you're so rolling... Do you know how to roll a crit? No. Okay, so you right crit... Uh, right, cr cl cl right click. Yeah, right click. Oh, yes, right got you. click on your yeah. damage and then choose crit and then select it and it should roll a critical hit automatically. Which and should be also do, uh, if you right. This doubles your dice and adds your mods all for you. D and D Beyond. Yay. Okay. So fourteen points of damage to this war horse. Uh, how? What are you attacking it with? Short bow. Right. Your short bow uh, arrow slams into it, um, and it's very unhappy about that. Ford. Come on. Do the thing. Record the damage. Here we go. Okay, cool. Damage is recorded. All right. So Al Al Dalmador, um, do you have any other actions, bonus actions, movement, flavor, or dialogue that you would like to add to your action sequence? 
And let's have a look. Let's have a great flight actions. And actually, yeah, I will. Um, I will try and hide using Mask of the Wild. Mask of the Wild. Okay, so you can hide as a bonus action. Yes. Okay, so using Mask of, of the Wild, I'll give you advantage to hide. So you're making a stealth check with advantage. I am this one. And we have 25. 25! Wicked! Okay, so you disappear. Um, where are you going to hide? It's going to need to be behind one of these trees. Um, I will... I mean, you can hide in plain sight, actually, with Mask of the Wild. You can hide in the snow that's falling. Like, you can hide in rain, for example. You know? Yeah, so you can... um... You can hide in plain sight with Mask of the Wild. I will hide here. Alright, cool. Very well. Is that the end of your turn then, Eldalm at all? Yes, it is. Alexander Cordana, show us your stuff. What would you like to do? I cast Firebolt at the Warhorse that is uh, attacking Elkes. Alright, roll to hit to the, 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 the Firebolt at the Warhorse. That was a natural one. A natural one. Okay. Uh, well, that's interesting. Um, is it getting possum here, or is it just me? It's definitely getting hot in here. It could have been. Fortunately for you, you're in a cold environment, and nothing caught fire immediately. Um, okay, so Alexander, is that the end of your turn? Do you have any other actions, bonus actions, movement, flavor, dialogue? That is the end of my turn. Very well. Thank you very much. Moving on to Rokan. Barry to here. Hunter's Mark and the horse All right. and uh, the ax axes. Okay, so you're going to start hitting it with your axes at short range. Okay, so your first one is a main primary attack. If somebody yeah. can roll that for us. 21. 21, nice. 21 to hit. That's definitely a hit. Uh, let's do damage to that. Uh, that is 8 points of damage plus mm. yep. uh, second slot uh, uh, cells for that. Spells for Hunter's Mark, that's an additional 4 points. Totaling 12 points of damage, is that right? 12 points of damage, yeah. Okay, so Rokan, how do you destroy this war horse? I just hit it on the side of the head. Alright. You know, with the axe. With the axe, alright. You yeah. sever through its neck and it's yeah. it, it snaps its spine and the whole horse just collapses to the floor in a heap. Um, dust and snow boofing up off the floor at you as you do so. Um, Alright, uh, you've still got another attack, but you have to move if you want to hit anything. Um, I'll move. That, let me just check something here. I'm clicking on zoom instead of instead of roll 20. So much to keep. Don't hanging. worry, I've been doing the same thing. Yeah. Uh, free hand, let's go. Okay, so here's a dead war horse. Okay, um... Cool. So, Rokan, actually, there is a ghoul right near you, which you snuck up on, which you can yep. still attack. You're going to hit him with your first, with your second move attack? Move my hunter's mark and smack him. Okay, so bonus action is to move your hunter's mark, yep. um, in which case you cannot attack him on this round, but you've definitely moved your hunter's mark to him. Okay, that's good enough. All right, very good. Um, that warhorse, he dead. So I kill him and move on to Alcas. Alcas, um, what would you like to going do? Going to. Well, I'm not going to rage yet. I'm just going to take a slash at this warhorse with my longsword. All right, roll to hit, please. That is a ten. Ten, sadly, does not cut through the warhorse's barding armor. Uh, looks like my screen's frozen for a minute there. I wonder if you can un-share uh, the screen and bring it back again, perhaps, might fix it. No? Okay, so that's a, that's a Russell... Th all together with me. Really? Okay, let's see if I can fix yeah. that. You're still here for me. But sure. you're, you're, you're frozen, but you're audible. Ooh, now I'm getting the Lumix thing. Okay, uh, let's see what we can do. Try and fix that. You have my curse, Russell. <laughs> Oh, my camera's decided to play up. Okay, so it's turned itself off. And check, check, check. I've got nobody. Have you got Here we go. No one? There we go. 
I can hear you all, but I can't see you. Okay, that's weird. I can see everyone now. Yeah, I can see everybody now. Um, okay, cool. Well, all right, thank you. Let's go back to oh, where and we I'm, After I miss my attack, I'm going to move. Um, oh, I got you all now. Cool. Yeah, sorry, I'll okay. I'm going to uh, move down. Possibly provoking an opportunity attack, I'm not sure, but... All right, from the horse, you're thinking? Yep. All uh, right. Jordan, do you want to try uh, restreaming again? Can you do that? Restreaming? Jordan's all right here. No, no, I'm um, re... The screen. Screen. Oh, right, right, sharing. Right, gotcha. Yes. Uh, okay, cool. All right, so we can see the the area again. Okay, so Alcas, you've moved down from, uh, and you're worried about an opportunity attack from him. Well, that is a fair call, um, and I think seeing as you asked for it, you should what you uh, ask for, you I shall should receive. Have should have just said nothing. Um, no, opportunity attack. What's your armor class? Not not 19, I think. Ooh, not quite. Okay, uh, you take 13 points of bludgeoning damage. Ooh, ouch. Okay. From the war horse as it shoots past you. Um, Alcas, is that the end of your turn? Do you have any other actions, bonus actions, movement, flavor? Or um, I think most of my movement there yep. was this war horse kicking me away. Right. Um, and there's no real uh, dialogue but there's a definite winded grunt right okay so Alcas kind of yeah. lands to the ground slides across a few feet from the kick of the horse all right very good you're going to use shall we make you prone oh for sure okay cool so you are prone excellent um nice so uh that war horse then turns and charges at you Alcas. Um, what's your AC? Oh, it's going to hit you. I'm sorry. 17. Yeah, I don't know. I've got a feeling you're going to be unconscious after this. Um, I have a feeling you're unconscious as well. Yeah, that's uh, 11 points of bludgeoning damage, Alcas. Uh, yeah, for sure. Oof. So Alcas is now unconscious. Okay, uh, Vespera is not here yet, so we'll worry about that. Aldalmador. Okay, um, after, after seeing that, uh, I don't know, definitely think, uh, realizes that this horse needs to go, so, um, I get, I got two attacks, right? Or just one? One. You may have a bonus action, which might amount to something. What are you? You're a, uh, well, of course, you're a, you're a rogue, rogue so... I mean, if you can find a position where you get advantage on an attack, then you get your uh, yeah, sneak attack. Uh, you can also run up to someone and make a medicine check to stabilize them. Oh, hell yeah. Alright, then, yeah, so I run up to um, Alcas, and yeah, I will roll for a medicine check. Alright, make a medicine check for us, please. Six. <laughs> Six. All right. Um, would you like to spend your inspiration, if you have any? I've lost mine. You've spent yours. Okay, never mind no, then. Have, no, I lost it. You it's lost it. Anymore. It's not there anymore. He, he's too far from me, isn't he? Okay. Uh, for you, well, it's not your turn yet. No, um, I so, no, I just wanted to know out of... Uh, is he too far from you? You could potentially dash to him. He yep. is... Because I think I've got touch. Yeah, he's I? fifty. He, uh, healing touch. Healing touch. He might have. He might have uh, cure light wounds. Cure yeah. wounds. Something like, yeah, that. something like that. You are a ranger after all. Okay, but uh, Aldelmador, is that the end of your turn? When it's my turn. So you've mm. dealt, you've knelt down. You've used your action to make a medicine check. Um, yeah, you you can f like you can for that action feed him a potion. I will offer you that too as another option if you have one. I don't think I do have one. Do you have a good berry that Vespera gave you? No. I don't think she gave me one. 
she gave everybody she one. She gave everybody uh, one, I'm pretty uh, sure. I never added it to, to my item. Right, she did well, give everyone two. Nice. Right. There yeah, you go. She's saying it. in the chat right now, you all have two berries except for Jordan. Um, okay, so... so you, you can shove a good berry in uh, his mouth and bring him back to one hit point if you want. Yeah, I haven't added that to, uh, to my inventory. That's why I didn't right. realize. But yeah, so if, if, it's, if, if that's the case and she has given me one, then yes, I'll, I'll give Alcas a good berry. You will have two, and you can give Alcas a good berry. So Alcas, you now have one hit point, and you will be getting up next round at cost of half your movement. Um, Alexander Cordana, what would you like to do? Uh, I cast Tribal Warhorse again. Okay, so this is the second Warhorse. The first one is dead. Yep, okay, roll to hit, please. Uh, a flaccid 20? A flaccid 20. Your f firebolt shoots directly into the skull of the warhorse, doing how much damage? Uh, seven points of damage. Seven points of damage. Nice hit. Okay, the warhorse <coughs> turns and sees you, and you see its undead eyes swivel and cast their gaze upon you at that point, Alexander. Um, this warhorse <coughs> begins to pant, and scuffs the earth with its uh well, its paw its hoof um very well alexander do you have any other actions bonus actions movement flavor or dialogue um, no i do not you do not all right rokan let's move on to you rokan what would you like to do this okay is the, the I'm orc ranger gonna i'm gonna dash to um thing magic yep and give him my two berries. Okay, he's already got one. Oh, I've got touch uh, handy thing. I'll do that. Touch handy thing. Okay, yeah, you want to show us on the doll where the orc touched you? Healing, healing something. All right, I'll look it up for you. Give me a yeah. moment. Okay, so Rokan, you're going to cast a healing spell on him. Uh, yeah. You know what? You don't have that spell because you're not that character and you're not that level. Uh, you have Hunter's Mark and Zephyr's Strike right now because you're level two. You've never. Well, so you tried saying something, Jordan, but you're muted. Yeah. So, giving that you cannot actually heal him, but you do have a potion I'll of healing. I'll this dude out, then this ugly dead thing. All right. So you're going for the ghoul then. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. And he's already been marked with the, with the Hunter's Mark. Right. Mm -hmm. Last one. I'll go for him. Okay. Um, uh, 15 damage for the first one. 15 damage? Uh, 15 hit, sorry. Alright, very good. Um, 15 to hit. Nice, that's a... Pretty sure that's a hit. A... Yes, that's a hit. Excellent. Uh, so that is 8 points of damage for normal. 8 uh, points of damage. Plus uh, 1, so 9 points of damage. And then I'm guessing you're attacking with the next uh, your other yep. attack. All right, yep. well, you you kill that ghoul okay. with your first attack. All right. All right. Um, is that the end of your turn? Uh, I've still got one hit with another axe. But All right. Well, I... you can throw that axe. Where's that horse? I'll throw it at that. All right. So you turn looking for the second horse. Um, yep. It's heading for Alexander next. Okay, I'll throw the axe. Okay, so it starts belting towards Alexander as your axe comes in. Roll to hit with your axe, please. Yes. Uh, that's a nine. Woof, it flies past the horse, thuds into a tree and stops. The okay. horse barely notices it and continues on its stride towards Alexander. Um, dun, 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 dun. What the... One moment, please. Editing encounters on the fly. It's the most fun you can have. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so Rokan, you've done that. The next person in our initiative round is Alcas with one hit point. Um, so I'm going to use half my movement to stand up and all right. dust myself off. Oh, that was, uh, something. Are you alright? And, oh, I don't, I'm, I'm, am I? 
mile ride? Well, you're pretty fucked up. You've got one hit point, so are you alright? So, I, I, I'm not sure. I don't even know. Um, I'm going to quickly whip out a dagger and flick it off at the warhorse while backing away. Alright, can you make a perception check? Also, as well as an attack roll, please. Uh, that is a 16 perception. Okay. And a 15 for attack. Okay, well, the fifth this, the perception check allows you to notice that this guy is stepping out of the tent. Behind you. Um, your attack roll is against uh, this guy or the war uh, horse? The horse. Okay, so at the undead horse. Very well. Uh, and the roll was? A 15. 15 hits. Let's do damage to the horse. That is seven points of damage. All right, very good. Your dagger takes purchase in the undead warhorse's neck, and a bunch of goo and um, throat contents slough out from around its neck onto the grass and ground and freeze that surrounds you. Um, is that the end of your turn, Alcas? Uh, yes, just have to do my movement on the map. All right, so you move. Very good. The warhorse charges at Alexander for that dirty old firebolt. Uh, Alexander, is your armor class higher than 18? No, it's lower than 18. I thought it might That's... be. You're very lucky to only take 7 points of damage from the horse's bludgeoning hooves that go well, <coughs> down on you. Unfortunately, I am unconscious. Okay, so Alexander is unconscious now. Very good. Um, on the next turn, uh, how many hit points does everybody have between them? 17. I'm, I'm, I'm full. So you're at 17, plus uh, right now Alcas has got one. one. Um, Alexander has zero. Alexander has zero, and, and Rokan, Rokan has, has full has hit has points full 18. at 18. So 18 plus... 9 plus, that's about 18 plus 18 is quite a lot. Okay, let's see. Do, do, do. I need 5d8. Because I'm going to cast sleep on you. Um, some of you are elves or half elves, so you might be immune or have. Uh, I am, I'm immune to sleep. Are you immune to it or you just have advantage on checks against it? Uh, it says immunity. It says immunity? Sleep. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, myself as a half elf has advantage against it. Right, so you can oh, make... Wait. Yep. No, sorry, advantage against being charmed and magic cannot put me to sleep. Yeah, you got the same as me. Okay, cool. Okay, so uh, between the people that are not unconscious, what's the total hit points? Uh, should be 17 plus 18 plus 1, so hold on, just let me quickly okay. like that. The wizard steps out of the, out of the... Yeah, 36, yeah. All right, so he steps out and he casts his hand around. Um, Alexander, you're asleep, so you don't notice this. Uh, who would notice this? Is one of you an arcane trickster, am I not wrong? Not yet. Not yet. Um, once I hit level 3, I will be. Right, well, you can make an a, 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 a arcana check. Um, because he's trying to cast sleep on everybody, but it okay. fails, it fizzes out, um, and he suddenly looks more concerned. At which, six. Okay, six. Um, <clears throat> on his turn then, he then runs back into the tent, and you can see just a little bit of between the flaps as he, as he moves in there, and around the fireplace is silhouettes against the inside of the tent. He picks up this staff, um, that has some kind of fancy business going on top of it. Um, something like a halo and a cross with spikes on it or something. Um, made of wrought black iron. And he begins coming back out again with it, but his turn is now over. Um, and we move to Vespera, who's running across the ice and snow, trying to get her makeup on, I assume, because she's going to be here in one minute, I've been promised. But we'll see. We'll see. Um... 
In any case, Al Delmador, you are next on the initiative order right now. Okay, so I'm get uh, uh, Al Dam's getting really, really sick of this horse, so he moves right up behind it and decides to try and stick it with his longsword. All right, so let's have a roll to hit, please, with a longsword for that. Twenty-three. That is a nice palpable hit. Your long sword penetrates its its hide and, and its armor. We have seven points of damage. Seven damage. All right, very good. Um, you hear it kind of make these wheezing noises as you penetrate its lungs, and it tries to breathe, but it does not breathe. But it makes the noises nonetheless. Um, at which point, do you have any other actions, bonus actions, movement, flavor, or dialogue? Um. Yes, I will, um, so, it's still alive, right? Seems to be. Okay, so I will, uh, disengage. Right. Um, and I will just move back a little bit. Um, just sort of like in the, in the, in the middle of the tree. Alright, fair call. Cool. Into the middle of the tree you go. Um, that's the end of your turn? Yes. Alexander, you're making a death save, please. Make save. Unless you would like me to roll this for you. I've already rolled it. I got a five. All right. Very good. A five. That is a fail. So, yep. moving right along. Rokan, it's your turn. What would you like to do? Uh, do I see Alexander? Uh, you do see Alexander. I'll use Zephyr to get over to him. Okay, so you cast Zephyr's Strike, um, yep. and you're going to move to get to him. I need to click on the right app. All right, uh, Rokan, Rokan, there you are. All right, so you zoom past this dude, not provoking any opportunity attacks because you have Zephyr Strike on. Um, you move very quickly to Alexander, whereupon, yep. I put the cherries in his mouth, my cherries. You stuff a berry, a good berry in his mouth, okay, yeah. Yep. You just need one. Um, okay, one all good. Yep. And because if you use more than one, you're wasting them because what they're good for is bringing people back from unconsciousness. Okay. If you okay. use the other one, it will just give him a hit point, which is at this point almost nothing. Um, and I, if I can, I know it probably won't work, but I'll take a quick shot at the wizard. Take a quick shot at the wizard. Bow and arrow. Bow and yep. arrow. Okay, so yep. you turn and fire at the at the wizard. Okay, you can do that. Yep. Roll to hit. Um, I will also quickly check out Zephyr's Strike to make sure that I have that all correct. Give yourself an advantage. Would Hello. you like to give yourself advantage on this attack? Hello. Yo. Nice Welcome. to have you back with us. Yay. <coughs> with advantage. All right. I so heard you all were looking for a pyromedic. Yes, a pyro yes. pyromedic. Okay. I've, so I flubbed up, and now we're in a fight. Let's stay on track here. Um, so, Barry, you're doing an extra D8 force damage with your hit if you hit, but you also have advantage. Okay. Uh, okay, I will roll that um, longbow again. Yep. Uh, flaccid 20. Flaccid 20 hits. Okay, so you hit the wizard. Um, That's okay. six points of normal damage. And... Four points of uh, zephyr strike damage. Okay, nice. Um, very good. He looks very hurt and very upset about that. Um, so you added the de zephyr strike damage too. Hang on, let me see what that was. Uh, and that was a four. Okay, f so six plus four, so ten points of damage. Barry, how do you kill him? Uh, between the eyes, arrow went flying right between his eyes. Okay, right between his eyes. Um, and he collapses, dropping the staff that he had in his hands. It falls to the ground and clatters there. Um, all right. The At that point, uh, the two... In fact, all of, the, all of the zombies that you're fighting all collapse to the ground. And at this point, uh, we should break the the map screen and go back to a standard role-playing screen. 
if we can. Oh boy. Uh, uh, El Elden just looks at the group and, and goes, uh, uh, <laughs> sorry. My mage hand comes out of my hand and instead of the blue, it's now a deep red. <laughs> it seems very angry and it just goes straight for his face and gives him a slap. Fair enough. Deserve that. Deserve that. Okay, so what do you guys do now? Um, the wind is coming in cold from the west. Um, it's now... Can I make a perception check to see if I can hear anything coming? Hear anything coming? Um, yeah, you can make a perception check. Cool. I just need to get the right one. There we go. I think if you do hear something coming, it's probably Vespera. Rokan's going to move into the tent. Okay. Uh, just Carefully, stealthy. Just, just very quickly, out, out of character, um, yep. during that fight, you, uh, Russell, did you say that uh, with very quick flash, but I saw like a silhouette, was that just, was that just the wizard, or was I, was I seeing like people inside the tent as well? Uh, it was just the wizard, you think? Okay, no, cool, sweet as, we'll continue. Yep. Um, I got a 12 for my perception check. 12 piece for the, 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 okay. <laughs> Anybody else got any, any perception numbers they're proud of? Uh, I think... Rokan is just heading into the tent, so I won't roll for him. Okay, but Rokan, okay so Rokan can make a stealth check to go into the tent, and then he can make an investigation check after that. That was a natural one for Rokan. Uh, okay, so Rokan, you knock the tent over. <laughs> um, the tent comes down around you as, as you go in, um, and for a couple of moments you find yourself a little restrained. All right. What do I know? Now, Vespera, you've been all the way back to the town of Durdantar, and you've delivered Mira to the to the family, I suppose, to her mother. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps said some kind words. You've explained to her that you want to teach her to become a druid. That, and I will have told her mum as well. Okay. Um, express my enthusiasm for it now just for a little bit of impartiality can you make me a percept up uh, at the persuasion check please i'll let you have advantage because you've got some cool tricks up your sleeve okay which you might have used for such a such a persuasion on these people at the time okay that's a 12. it's a 12 okay um even with advantage i'm not good at that you're not good at that Okay, fair enough. An could I have guided myself? I you, could, you, could, you could guide yourself. I think that's fair. You can add a d4 to that number. So another two. So, so 14. 14. Yeah, okay. Well, I think that's good enough to, to, to get them kind of okay about this idea. Um, and now I assume that you've left them there and you're like, okay, I have to return back to my party because they need me because I'm the, I'm the pyro medic. Pyro. Medic. Pyromedic. <laughs> it's a little play on words. There. Your your term, not mine. Um, <laughs> and so you head off back into the forest, chasing the the footprints that they left. You head around through to the marshes, um, going beyond the marshes. You're g going around into another valley. You follow the tracks. Can you make a survival check for me, please? Oh boy, I could try. No, I'm lost. Boy. Well, I'm lost. What did you roll? <laughs> a five. How do I nature? Okay, well... I got um, distracted by all the, all the trees. Right, all right. The, the interesting flora that I've never come across before. Does your, um, does your animal spirit, fire spirit, have its own stats? Uh, she does, but I don't have her out. No, I was just wondering if she would be able to make a survival check that could save the day. But, you know, that's in your court. Okay, I'll just get lost. <laughs> right, well, you're lost then. No. Um, no, we're better at this. I think you guys can make perception checks. The difficulty is going to be very high because Vespera is lost and lost it as, as far as... And it's so. going to yeah. be really hard for me because I'm stuck in a tent. That's, so that's just a normal perception. Straight up perception. Uh, there was a 14 for me. And so I think Barry at a disadvantage because he's stuck in a tent. Barry's at disadvantage because he's stuck in a tent. Okay. <laughs> a oh, he okay. got a natural 20. N he got a natural oh. 10. Oh. <laughs> he got a 10. Right. 
<laughs> sad. It's a sad story, Rokan. I'm sorry. What happens? Okay. Well, uh, El Delmador and uh, Alexander, you th you see a flash of color in the woods. Off to the side. Um, hello. Well, you hear the hello, hello calling out. Then I assume mm. because she's actually. The sparrow, is that you? Good morning. Oh, where are you? Hello. Is that a tree? I'll just start looking at the trees, thinking that's where the sounds come from. Hello, the sound of my voice. Keep talking. Can someone help me out of the tent? Where are you? I cast fireballs in her general direction. In your general direction. <laughs> in the general direction. <laughs> okay. Are you trying to start a fire? I was going to say, she's in the trees. Roll, roll well. <clears throat> right. This is, this is... I imagine I'll find them. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to hit anything. I mean, you'd be safer if he was aiming at you. <laughs> okay, so you eventually come up to the group, I take it. Hi, everyone. Oh, wow. You so look hurt. So, so you... Yeah. What do you mean? I'm fine. There are several rotting corpses here. Two of them are horses. Two of them look like they were people at some stage in, in the past six months. Um, they look like they've been raised from the dead by the honest looks of things. Um, and there's this uh, dead or possibly unconscious wizard um, laying on the floor in the entranceway to the tent. Alexander, can you make a perception check, please, for me? And a moving tent. Mm. <laughs> That's eight for me. An eight for you. Never mind. Okay. Uh, uh, I cast now, the tent and I start lifting up the The tent? tent. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd also like to help Rokan out of the tent. Okay, so you uh, get Rokan out of the tent. Would you, is anybody investigating the contents of the tent? Uh, I was going to investigate the wizard's body after helping Rokan out of the tent. Okay. Mainly, the main thing I'm looking for is rings on his fingers. Right. Um, he does have a couple of rings. They they look like fairly simple rings. Um, one of them has some uh, inscriptions on it. Um, he also has a number of bags and things with him, one of which is kind of heavy-ish. Um, and he's carrying this... He's got this staff clasped in his dead hands and the staff itself um, made of wrought black iron um, with this kind of spiky eightfold cross on the top of it um, wrapped into a sun, sort of a sunset symbol like a chaos star I pick up the staff okay very well you look quite ominous you have to peel it from this guy's dead hands though it's fine. Or would you let me take a check for that? No, no. You, I'm just pointing out the the traumatic oh. aspect of it and how it might affect your character. You you wanted to chop his um hand off. No, it's all it's all right, Rokan, and I, I rip his fingers off. Okay, so you. Is this the yeah. guy that was doing okay. all the necromancy? Alexander, you can make an investigation check, please. I pull out my scrying crystal and I go along with very fine, you know, fine details. Alright. Um, everybody cool with Alexander making this check? Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Alright. Um, so you're going to make it with advantage because of the crystal? Broken and sulking. Broken and sulking. Oh, so fun. 15. Okay, tell me about how you investigate what you do. I use my scrying crystal and I sort of put my eye up to it and I go over everything and I and, and focus mainly on the top of the staff, All right. um, looking for any inscriptions or um, symbols or anything like that. All right. Can you make an arcana check, please? Yes, I can. Uh, that is a 14. This is a powerful, magical staff. It has you're not sure when or where it's from but this is this is something um i i i sort of close my eyes and pay attention to what i'm holding on to and do i feel anything or you feel like there is the potential to attune to such an object you feel I, a kind I, of whispering around you in in the air hey alexander before you, hey, hi, 
Hello, Miss Spirit. Um, I've missed you all. I really we've missed, have. We've missed you. Um, as, little, as a little cut of blood just like trickles down my side. There is something oh. that you also um, may begin to notice at this point, um, Alexander. Um, the body at your feet, now that you're examining it, seems familiar. They're not wearing red robes. This is not a Barakile wizard. That wizard escaped earlier. You let them go. Yeah. This is the body of somebody you know from House Kaelorin. Their name is Urania, and it is a she. I, I, I suddenly turn around and look at the body and go, Urania? What? And I, I'm, I'm visibly confused and what you Can you make a history check for me, please? I have no idea who she is. I got a five. Okay, never mind. You don't remember any recent rumors about her going missing, but never mind. I did tell you that like three sessions ago. Yeah. So before, <coughs> before you use that, I, I would suggest maybe having someone look at it. Alexander, the final thing that you find with your investigation is a crystal ball inside this man's robes. It's about yay big, wrapped up in silk cloth. Um. I, I, I put the staff down, but I put my foot like over the staff, so I'm like covering it with my foot. Um, and I pick up the crystal ball and I have a look at it. Okay, can you make a investigation check? I'm not going to use my scrying crystal because it will just do nothing right. to a crystal ball. Right. <laughs> I got a 17. 17. Um, well, it's clearly a magical artifact, clearly a magical object. Um, it has scratched onto it um, very fine... Um, you assume elven writing um, but it's written in a magical um, cant so to speak and it's difficult to make sense of it but you notice that it has a sort of a red tinge of light shining through the letters as they have been carved around it Can I make an arcana check to recognize, see if I recognize the, some of the writing? Uh, you, can, you can make an arcana check I have no idea, I've got a six. It looks yeah. like Elvis writing. Yeah. It has a message to it. Yeah. Ben, look at that, please. I pass it to the spear and I pick oh. it up. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll try and read it. Alright. Um, mm -hmm. So, do you want to make an arcana check, please? If anyone starts to try to read any of this out loud, I'm just going to yell at them to but why I don't shut, do their, that. shut their mouth. Alright. So, you have held an action. <laughs> held an action to yell at someone. Alright. That sounds fair. Uh, 16. 16. Um, clearly magical. Um, clearly some sort of scrying stone. Um, but there's a part of it that you can't decipher. Elden's just standing there like going, is it why, not, a, why not let the elf try? Is it in a specific text though? Uh, the text is elven, but the writing is indecipherable. It's in cipher. Uh, okay. okay. Here you are. Yeah. I so, yeah. Would like to make edits. You can make an arcana check. Uh, what? Well, Twenty-five. Like... Natural twenty. A oh. natural twenty. Okay. Well, um, given that you do have an intent to become an arcane trickster and you've begun studying the arts of the arcane, um, you are able to decipher that. Yes, it is written in elven text, but it has also been corrupted. It is not pure elven. Um, it's, it's a kind of dark um, magic that has been formulated from stealing elven runes and infusing it with other forms of magic. Um, the red tint, um, you believe, may be emblematic of its connection to the Barakyle Envoy. You're not sure, but that's a possibility. Um, and as you look at it, you feel it whispering to you as if it wants you to attune to it. Okay. Um, well, with regarding the information that I received, I turned to, turn to the group and go, well, this is definitely Elvish. But, uh, For, I want to add one more thing. Yeah, go ahead. Before you start telling them this, um, you have a moment where you see a, f a face 
in the crystal and it pops into your head it pops into your consciousness nobody else sees the face it does not appear on the physical crystal mm -hmm. but appears in your head and the face is like right up very very close to you and all you can see is this painted up eye um, quite close up <clears throat> looks like the eye of an old man wearing sort of arcane caked on makeup Yeah, um, I don't think, sorry, T6, I don't think at the moment um, Aldam has any knowledge of that symbol, because I don't think he's been at any of the uh, sessions where that might have popped up. Right. So um, I'll just I'll just begin with uh, Alden just is like in, the, in, this, in this trance, like he's there, but he's not there and he's sort of like shaking after seeing what, what he saw but you, the others don't but all they see is just him going holding this orb still right okay so he sort of seems to be a little bit taken with it anybody that wants to make an insight check might gather something from his state yeah I'll make an insight check what is it in? I rolled a 15 that's normal <laughs> great too hurt to care about anyone else in this world. Oh, Algus. I'm taking... He needs some heals. He needs Alex Barry. got a 13. Does that do anything or am I just stuck? Uh, 13. Um, <laughs> yeah, Alexander, you, you you can see that he's he's being affected by this crystal. He's he's certainly something going on with him. Um, I... I... Put the staff behind my back, and I go over and grab the crystal ball and take it off him. Now, when you say you put the staff behind your back, now this I is behind my back. This is a, I'm not like putting it next to anything. Okay. Just behind my back. Just to be clear, it's a six foot long steel object. Um, with <laughs> I'm a, like with leaning a... back as I'm trying to grab this thing, and okay. it's kind of like. Is it me. is it leaning against your back or is it on the ground? It's on the ground, but behind my back. Okay, at your back. Okay, got you. Just being clear, that's all. Just so I know what's going on. Okay, so you put the staff there, and you're going for the crystal. Do you want to make a sleight of hand check to see how sneaky you are about the staff business, or...? Uh, yeah, why not? Um, I got a 14. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. Right, so... Insight. I got 14 as well. Okay, well... <laughs> You can see that he's got something on his mind. Um, but what are you actually doing, Alexander, now that you've got the staff at your back? You're kneeling down by the crystal. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to pull it away from uh, Aldam. All right. Aldam, is there any chance that you're going to clasp that crystal, or are you going to just let him take it? Mm, um, for this, because I absolutely messed up last time, uh, I'm going to let Alex take it. Okay. All right, so Alex, you'd grab the crystal from his hand. I, I say, uh, Eldem, are, are you all right? Eldem just suddenly goes, <gasps> Wait, where am I? Am, am, am I alive? Y yes, you are. Oh, Jesus. Ah, oh, oh, Alex. Hey. You, you, you can still see that he's, like, he's all there, but he's just, like, heavily shaken. Now I'll give you an inspiration point if you can if you can switch Jesus out for a, a appropriate um, canonical deity. Uh, All right, that's fair. You can have inspiration. There you go, just like that. That wasn't hard, was it? Okay, uh, so what would we like to do? Taking this guy's things off. Okay, so Rokad's taken his, uh, the rings, did you say? The rings and the, um, his hole, oh, you know, the red cloak. Right, okay, takes his, okay, well this guy's not wearing a red cloak, that's the interesting thing. Okay. Um, he does have a, a spell book with him. Ooh, um, ooh. what the? Mm. Book. Not good for me, anybody want book? Alden looks over and, go, and, and like, still shaking and just goes, nah. I'll, I'll have a look at the book. Can you work on? I'll walk over, pick okay. up the book, the book, open it up, 
Or nonsense. No. Just absolute nonsense. <laughs> Um, can I make an investigation of the book? Or you can make an book? investigation yeah, of the you book. Can have it. I, I, I look at the book and I have a fair understanding of what all this means. It's just I can't do anything with it. Yeah. Yeah, basically. Um, actually, El Dalmador, once you get to level 3, you'll make the most use of that book, but that's not my concern. Are there any kind of bags of holding in the general vicinity? Bags of holding? Uh, oh, oh, well, that we did, could kind of assume. You did mention earlier that there were a bunch of bags lying around. While this is all happening, um, Alcas is like rifling through them, looking for food, booze, something to heal himself. All right. Um, all right. Well, you do find some food. You do find some fine uh, cured liquor. Um, you find some some fancy things. Um, you find some money, about twelve gold. Ooh, if I find that, I'm definitely going to try slip that away before anyone notices. So, that I would you like to make a sleight of hand check, please, to to do that? Um, uh, that is a seventeen. That is a seventeen. Very good. Seventeen, no problem. I think you can sleight of hand that away. No one's going to notice. What I will get is a uh, initiative check from everybody, just in case we have any more combat than any story. I got a 3, 17. 17, 16, 18, I see. Very good, well done, thank you very much. Okay, and I will get a perception check for everybody too, please. Mm. Uh, that's a 6 for me. That's a 16. 10 for me. And a 9 for Rokan. All right. And then for me. Very good. Um, Alcas, so you're going through the money stuff and you've just pocketed some money there um, when suddenly a small impish-like creature appears in front of you, one that you've seen before. Out of game, we know that it's as a quasit. Um, it screams at you <laughs> um, using its fear uh, power uh, called Scare. Um, you need to make a DC something wisdom saving throw or be frightened for a minute. Uh, 15. 15 saves. Um, the. Can Very good. Vespera. Immediately yep. react as well and go for an unarmed strike to just punch it. You know what? I think it's fair. Um. I'm gonna I'm gonna make you wait for your turn. Okay. Happy. Uh, Vespera, you hear this sound. Right. I turn to where the sound is coming from. All right. You see this demonic little imp creature, this quasit, nasty little pointy teeth and big pointy ears sticking out of its head. These big bulbous eyes. Its green skin. It's like a cross between a, a lizard and a toad and a and a little demonic imp thing. Bring up a bow, the bow. Yep. Alcus's bow. Um, I am going to fire that. So this is the short bow that is not Alvin that you've previously used to kill quasits. Right. Roll to hit. <laughs> All right. Um, short bow. Ding ding. ding. Uh, Sixteen. Sixteen. Uh, that is a hit. Do your damage, oh, please. Goodness. All right. Um, it will be a 11 plus 2 for the braces. Alright. Um, you destroy it. Your arrow pierces its head, smashing it to the floor. <laughs> it wriggles for a while, waving its little hands and paws in the air. It's almost cute as it dies and perishes, gushing black blood out onto the small table that it stood on, um, attacking Alcas. You sure you're not a ranger? No, I'm not. I'm gonna walk over to Alcus mm. and just be like, are you okay? Mm. You're right. Ah, oh, he's I'm uh, pacing by this point. Just oh, that uh, mm, yeah, that, that one really gave me a fright. I'm gonna pull out um, six berries. Okay. Yeah. Beefy. Um, I know it's not everything. You you will still look hurt afterwards, but something. I'm going to uh. Have all six of those plus one of my own. 
Just as I'm walking around, just trying to de-stress from the fright I just got. So, uh, what's our berry check like? What have you used? Because I, I'm thinking I might make some more. I used one. Uh, I am. I have one left. I have one okay. left. Well, chances are they're going to run out shortly anyway. So, um, if you want to eat those now. Go for it, I'll create some more. Okay? Excellent. I'm going to use my, my other two spell slots to create the rest of the berry um, and then put them in a little, little bag. Uh, hand out, uh, make sure everyone is refreshed with two each. All right. Um, so that will be uh, 10 unaccounted for, and then I've got 10 extra. Wow. Sorry, 10 accounted for. Okay. So what are you guys doing at the moment? Are you taking a rest here or what? I'm still freaking the shit out. Right. So you're freaking out. Okay. So what are you doing then? You you sitting down on the ground freaking out? Are you standing there or how do you, how of, does that I'm play? I'm kind out? of like sort of like sitting with my like my knees like that, so not like legs out straight. Right. Sort of like So you sort of head in your knees kind of thing? Yeah. Right. Okay, so uh, clearly Aldalmador is freaked out. Um, what are you guys doing? Anything do you care? Eating berries. Can I, like, can I do a performance to see if I can try and calm him down by doing something? Like, um, show the knee? Yes, you can try something along those lines. You can make a... Uh, or a persuasion check, I think, might be more... I think I'll do a persuasion check, actually. Uh, that is a 19. 19, okay. So, El Delmador, he's, he's... Clearly, Alexander is doing his best to calm you down. Um, Alexander, what sort of things are you saying? Why don't, um, we, why don't we try and roleplay this a little bit? Try to roleplay? Um, I just go, <laughs> what's the best thing about Switzerland? Switzerland is not a place in the world that anybody has ever heard of. You lose your inspiration and are struck by a fridge that falls from the sky and smashes your character dead. Try again. The character is dead. Um, um, okay, hold on. Um, trying to think of something. Um, 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 why do we tell actors to break a leg? Because everyone has a cast. Ah. So he's literally telling jokes to you. Okay. Um, apparently it was funny. So, um, El Delmador, you can react as, as you wish. Yeah, go on, Barry. It was so bad, he got distracted. Excuse yeah. me. Are you Alex Alexander? <laughs> can, can, can you answer my question? Um, are you trying to make him commit suicide? No, of course not. Really? Okay. Oh, you people are strange people. <laughs> okay. And, um, is that other place they were constructing? Because they were constructing another little place, weren't they? What? Uh, not really. It was just, they were just fortifying the tent with wooden structures. Okay, okay, okay. All right, I'm going to fix up the tent. Okay, so you fix up the tent and you get it all tidied up. Um, all right, sounds good. Anything else that you would like to do or investigate while you're here? Are you taking a um, rest? So, continuing on with what Alex and Eldam was doing. Yeah. Um, you see, uh, Alex is like sort of like holding him, telling him this, this, these jokes, and you you see like he sees like this faint smile come come back and just burst into laughter everyone, everyone's like that wasn't really funny but like Alvin just has like the biggest laugh for some reason and okay yeah basically thanks him very good you're okay. welcome and I go over and pick the staff up again All right. I'm not looking out of these out of this out of my hand you can see now that the you, you, the area that you're in is beginning to fill up with kind of fog now because it's further into the day and the ice is melting under the heavy sun um, at this time of year. And the second sun has arisen, so this is getting it twice. Um, so everything around you is sort of steam rising in the forest. Just, uh, just quick out of character question. Uh, yes. um, regarding that book, does, did anyone actually grab it and have it on them at the moment? 
Alexander has it. I had it, but I put it down. Okay, so we haven't got that yet. Okay. You can grab it if you want. Uh, it's I've there. Got... Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I, uh, basically, uh, Alvin, Alvin gets back on his feet and looks down and sees this, this book and goes, uh, does, in, does anyone mind if I hold on to this? That's fine. <clears throat> Honestly, with everything that we've gotten, I would probably want it to be checked by someone. The creature that you just killed, by the way, um, is beginning to evaporate into the ether. It's sort I'm of... really good at hitting those things, weirdly. You are. It's, in the end, all that's left is your arrow sticking into the snow with a bit of green slime on it, and even that is beginning to fade away. Yeah. I killed one of these things as well, I believe, with a bow. So all we need to do is shoot it with a pointy thing. Um, how long does it take to attune to the staff that I'm holding? One hour. Rogan is cleaning his exes. Shuffling them up. Yeah, Aldem, Aldem will be looking at this book. No. Alright. Does, does anyone here have any knowledge of uh, this area of the world as before the wizard left? Oh. There is... Anyone else want to make a, uh, a perception check or an investigation check, please, inside the tent? Uh, I'd rather a perception by doing an investigation. 21, oh, natural 20. All right, Aldelmador, now that you're actually rummaging around, in, in, in the book, a map slips out of the book. Um, and the map shows a trail heading north into the mountains for three days and a tower. Ah, guys, guys, just uh, found, found this map if anyone wants to have a look at it. That would be perfect for what I was about to ask. I got a 22. 22 for what? My perception, uh, investigation check. All right, well, you will have noticed the map too at the same time. Um, I, <coughs> I lean in with Eldam and I think El Paso, we look at the map. All right. So it clearly, as I said, it basically shows a trail that heads through the trees, heading north along the ridge line, um, goes up into another valley, goes beyond that valley um, for a couple of days, and then there is a tower marked on this map. Up. Tower, no. tower, tower catches Aldev's eyes straight away and he, he instantly looks at the group and goes this this tower uh, I, I, I think I think we learned something about it before uh, what, 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 was it, that, that was you wasn't it Elkis? That Yes, that there was a the wizard before he left was talking about the tower and he was also mentioning something about uh something advancing or coming across the ice? Mm. Uh, Does there seem to be anywhere on the map that is like an ice, like a frozen lake or a frozen river or anything? Um, well, I would say that there's a bit, a bit of snow and ice through the trees on the way across here in the frost in the morning. Um, but there doesn't seem to be anything on the map that's like fully icy. It might have just been a turn of phrase. Aldo looks at, uh, looks at Alcas and goes, well, I, I can't speak for the others, but you seem to be the one with the most knowledge at the moment regarding this tower, so it's up to you what you decide uh, what we do. Yeah. All I know is that Red Wizard was uh, at the tower, and this, this person that we uh, ended up killing um, seemed to be an initiate. So you I think... Mean, so you think the guy that we, the, the person that we let go, they, they might head to that tower, or? You oh, let go for a person? Sure. Well, we didn't let them go, we just waited for them to leave before we came into the camp, which when we, that's when we were attacked. Right. Have, looking how the fight went, I don't think having another wizard who seem to be of the Barrack Isle wizards would have been good. It's probably a good thing that you have let him go. Because then they won't really be alerted. Except... In, until their friend over here doesn't turn up to help them out. Yeah. And the fact that we just took out two war horses as well. Where he rode off 
on a skeletal one, so... So, what's... Yes, however... What are we going to do from now? We gotta go to the tower. But we also have things we need to do for Alexander's sake. So yes, I feel like we were sent here... Jack we were sent here to investigate the uh, undead coming back to life. We found the source of that. We found the reason. Yeah, we have an we explanation. Haven't, we haven't stopped the source of that. I, I turn to Rokan and stop it. I think we should finish it and end the source. I, I agree. We're already here, we might as well continue. We're, we have duties at home. This is my duty. This was the this was the first task that we were assigned. It I, is the way I see it is that we were told to find out who it is. That was our task. Not to stop them. They will send us because to them maybe we are what you say the, expendable. The expendable. That no, word. I'm only joking. It's fine. We're not. Look at us. We're adorable. But, We're needed. Mm -hmm. So they will send us back anyway. So why do we not do the job while we are here? Because we have to do the other job. What job? Aldamador looks it's at Vespera. Me forget. Me forget. It's fine. Aldamador says what? Yeah, it looks at Vespera and goes, oh. Well, if we, if we don't finish it, think of what might still happen to Mira and her mother. Well, I plan on taking her back to Dagdakia with me. Okay, well, what, what about the mother? I, I wouldn't I mind think... taking her as well. And the I nice think... people in the city and the town... I think as well, if at this point we are, we can leave now and we were never here, we were never involved in this, however if we attack the tower, there is a chance that the Barakar wizards come after us knowing that we were involved. They will come after you anyway, you have taken one of theirs. Can I make you guys roll a perception check please? Sure. Uh, 16 for me. 13 for me. And a natural one for Rokan. Okay, three. Rokan, you're Ding. clearly distracted by your own feet right now. Um, or something else. It's up to you. Um, I haven't had any food for a while. Right, so you're really hungry. <laughs> Rokan's stomach's growling then. That makes sense. Yeah, um, that distracts me. Uh, Vespera, you're also apparently distracted by Rokan's stomach growling. Um, with a 15? With, oh, I'm sorry, I'm seeing a Vespera 10 investigation check. I'm sorry, I take it back. Uh, 15 for Vespera, 21 yes. for, for Alcas, 13 for Aldelmador, 16 for Alexander. Well, I think pretty much everybody except Rokan notices the hawk that flies down into the clearing and lands across the way on a tree stump and looks at you. There's that bloody bird again I keep seeing. Okay, straight away when the wind is bird, I grab my bow. Just turn and fire? Yeah. Alright, so yeah. Rokan just... Yeah. Fire, start firing at it. Okay, roll to hit, please, Rokan. Longbow, roll to hit. Eleven. Eleven. Ah, uh, eleven. Does that hit a fucking hawk? You know, I actually have to look that up. It just landed, so... Never have an animal in your storyline without a without a stat block because the players will try and kill it. Well, you know. Well, they tried to kill every single hawk so far. So Eleven is continue. sadly a miss. For the reason why there are no more hawks. Don't I don't I have <laughs> two shots? Uh, not on this character, I'm afraid. Yeah, sadly, you're thinking of your level seven ranger, um, who does indeed have two shots. Okay, just um, one. Yep. Do I have time to quickly throw a dagger and try and hit it? You have this or one really? moment to make one attack. Roll now, or forever hold your peace. That was uh, misses piece. completely. All right. I cast a five volt towards it. All right, roll to hit. Yeah, I'll throw a dagger as well. I got a seventeen. Seventeen actually will hit. All right. And I do one point of damage. Okay, I, I throw the dagger. Uh, your one point of damage kills it. 
cool. <laughs> um, so it's it's a crispy hawk now. Um, I, I I go and pick up the um the hawk with one hand still holding onto the staff and go, Rokan, lunch, and I. Who's holding the orb right now? Alexander's got it. He took it off me. I put it on the ground. Okay. I put it back to the ground. So it's, it's just on the ground in the snow at the moment. Okay. You notice that it is some somewhere along the lines it has been half wrapped up again in um, silk. I put that down and the crystal was completely visible. Now it's, it's half wrapped. What? Can you make a survival check, please? Is that all of us? Sorry, what? I got a natural one. Okay, well, you're clearly completely freaked out and distracted and have no idea what's going on. Somebody else had something to say? Oh, I was going to say, was this a survival check for all of us? Uh, you can make it. Uh, we may as well all make it, so I'll do one as well. Mind if I make a perception because everyone's distracted? Yep. I, I just wanted to make sure everything's Yep, sure. Safe. I got a seven. Okay, you don't Rokan notice got nothing. Rokan got a nine, and uh, Alcas, what did you get for your for your uh, survival check? Uh, six. Okay, so nobody's really noticing anything here. Um, you're looking around at each other, and Vespera, you're looking off in the distance uh, yep. with a twelve perception 12. check. Yeah. Nothing particularly strongly standing out to you at this point, except maybe the weather uh, is turning for the worse. Looks like. Wait, you guys are right. You look very distracted. Uh, well, I, no. What? I, I don't like this place. This it stinks of death. There's weird things going on. There's little demon things jumping out and scaring us. I, I think we need to decide if we are going to the tower or returning to the town. I just want to leave this place. With me freaking out, I think I just go home. Home. Alexander, can you make a wisdom saving throw, please? Certainly I can. Uh, that is a 17. 17, okay. Um, you you get this the, the impression that the staff is tingling your intuition. Um, it's like it's as you're, because you've been sort of playing with the idea of attuning to it, haven't you? Yeah, I have. Um, and it's kind of, it's it's trying to attune to you too. Like it seems to want to, and you have this feeling like it's almost trying to communicate with you emotionally. I I open my emotions to it. All right, and as you do, um, you sense this voice in your peripheral hearing. Um, whispering to you go to the tower travel forward and meet your destiny um, I just say to the group return to your house victorious we, we've got to head to the tower where's that We've just got to go to the tower, and I, I start going in the direction that I saw on the map. Very nice insight check. He's acting a little bit shifty. You can make, it, you can make an insight check. He's definitely acting shifty. He's yeah, gone from. Well. Yep. Everybody um, can make 20, one. Three. At a 19. Yeah, 23. 23. Crikey. Yeah. All right. So Vespera's a 12, Al Dalmador is a 19, and Alkis is a 23. Do we want one from Rokan, or does he not care? Rogan is like eating hawk. <laughs> Raw. I'm, I'm, yeah, he's eating the hawk. He's picking and, the. And he's thinking, I'm eating now, so. Pulled the legs off. He's just eating it raw. Yeah, and and I'm thinking, I can't let them go by themselves, I suppose. Okay, this time me go. All right. That's a bad idea, Alexander. What are you doing? I'm I'm not paying attention to them too any I'm into anymore, I'm just walking. So Alexander Are you holding the staff? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, I'm still holding the staff. It's like dragging along in the ground. Can I, I do a can I do a sleight of hand to try and take it out of his hands? 
Uh, I don't think you can do a sleight of hand to take it out of his hand. It, that's it's trying to be sneaky. Taking something out of somebody's hand is not very sneaky. Um, yeah. You could make a uh, some sort of athletics check to try and take it out of his hand if you wanted to make it. Well, a no, not minus one. Okay. Um, I will, because I'm assuming with that insight check, we get that something weird is going on with him. Something weird is going on with him, yes. And he's walking um, along, dragging the staff in, in, through what is now starting to pile up as snow. Take my shield and try smack his hand and just bat the staff out of his hand. Okay, so you want to make an unarmed strike, basically? Yes. A 13. What's your AC? It's a 16. You yeah. do not hit. Sadly, does not hit, but now you're aware of this attack, um, what do you want to do, Alexander? I don't do anything. I just keep walking. I'm, I'm mindset on going to this tower. So you, you the voice tells me to do something. You ignore them then. I pretty much ignore them. Yeah. All right. Okay. Rokan comes up on him. All right. And gets in front of him and keeps walking with him. That's all right. And then he turns around and he picks him up real quick. You just lift him up. Yeah. All right. I'm not going to check for that. All right. So you lift Alexander up off the ground. Alexander, what do you do when he lifts you off the ground? Does this drop? Do you drop the staff at this point, or no? The staff is like welded S to my hand. Right. Fair enough. Okay. So you've lifted him up and the not staff. Not going to punch him in the head. You're going to punch him in the head. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You're not punch him in the head. All right. There are other ways to do this. But... Yeah. I th I think we're going to get a little bit of a fall this one. You can make an unarmed strike. Yeah, yeah I agree. agree. A 14, he misses. A 14, he misses. Okay, so you, you try and thud him, but he's, he's you know, he's defending himself. Well, you, uh, if you put his arms up, he might drop the thing. I think he has shield. Yeah, he's yeah. holding it. I mean, he's he's, yeah. he's he's made it clear he's they not letting it go. Okay, so, yeah, so we're, we're just, we're, we're, we're just, we're just going to go to this tower then. Okay. There's no stopping him. Why don't you just, we'll just take him back to the town. Alexander, um, can you, can you hold him the something? entire time? Rokan, are you still holding him up the, off, off the ground? Yeah, I'll keep, I'll walk towards the town then. Right, you can't carry him indefinitely, you're not that strong. I know, I know, but I'll walk as far as I can. Okay. Was it, was it like four hours or, or something like that from the town to this, like, swamp? And we've gone around, Through all the way room. around, to the tent. So that's going to be like a <coughs> back to Rokan takes him to a rock, sits him on the rock and holds him there. Alexander, are you saying anything while this is going on? Mm -hmm. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm not, not, not protesting. Sits him on a rock and says, what you doing? You know what you're doing. I, I say to Rokan, You yes. must return to the tower. I, I say, I'm, yes, I know what I'm doing, Rokan, and I try to get up. I am happy. You do not need these companions. They will break your trust. I am happy to follow him to the tower if he asks us to, but not while he's holding the staff. He happy to follow you to the tower. You heard him. Uh, put the, must, put the staff down and then tell us. Yes. And I will be happy to follow you. This might be sort of left field. Um, mm. But could I do an Arcana check on Alex? Um, what is your justification? Uh, because um, I, you know, Eldam has a has a feeling that the thing that he went through, which the group doesn't know about yet, but what he went through is sort of similar. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you can make an Arcana check. Damn. Yeah, you can't see any particular connection between the arcane and what he's doing presently. Yeah, it was worth a shot. Now, at this point, Alexander, you are not compelled to do anything. You are not physically compelled or magically compelled. You've just been spoken to by a voice. Okay. Um, I say to the group, okay, let's go back to town then. And I get up and start walking back towards the town. Okay. 
broken little get up. Now he's walking back to the town. Alright. I'm still holding on to the staff though. It's like welded. It's, it's welded to me. It's like, um, you know, magical heat sources just like curled my hand around it. I'm kind of using it as a walking stick through the snow. Remember, I am 45 and spindly, so I need that support. Alright. Um, can I have perception checks from everybody, please? I was just going to say, uh, before I rolled that one, I think I'm very suspicious of Alexander right now and uh, probably have like a dagger up my sleeve with like held action of throwing it at him. If However, what's the trigger? Uh, him doing anything aggressive towards the group. Okay. However, I think because of that, my perception would be at disadvantage. That sounds fair and reasonable. I got a six anyway, so. All right. I got a flaccid 20. Flaccid 20. 23. At disadvantage, I got a 19. Wow. Jesus. A Rokan? Rokan uh, perception? Rokan. I think I rolled Rokan. Did I roll Rokan? 15. 15 for Rokan. 15. Okay. Very good. Um, okay, so Alcast 19, Rokan 15, Vespera 23. You will pass. Al Dalmador with a 6, you fail. Um... Okay, so everybody else, it looks like, uh, notices that the storm is gathering, it's closing in, it's darkening, the winds are picking up, there are clouds um, falling upon the mountainside at this point, um, and visibility is beginning to really retract down to like 40 feet in the fog. Does anybody end up taking that orb? I believe Alexander is carrying it. No, I'm not carrying the orb. Nobody's I'm carrying the staff. Okay, so who's carrying the orb, if anybody? No, I'll take up. If, if you want to, sure. I'll do it otherwise. Yes? Actually? Who has the orb? I need to know this. The orb was left on the floor, according to uh, Jordan. Okay. I think I'll put it in a bag. Okay, so you've got it in a bag. Okay, cool. Yeah. Keep that in mind. All right. Um, so I'm going to get survival checks. Uh, survival check from Alexander, at least, to start with, to see which direction he wanders off in. This... I wander off in just a random direction. I got an one. You're going back towards right. the tower. Yeah. Okay. So I think I'm just lost now. I'm kind of. Everybody else can make survival checks, uh, please, also to see whether they realize that Alexander. Nice. Is... Nope. Okay. My rolls are horrible at moments. Alcas, you are aware that Alexander is heading. Uh, he's made a turn. He's d turning towards the tower. At least you think he's. He might be getting lost, or he it's might same, be trying same with to. Same Rokan as well. He's rolled an eighteen. Right. So Rokan, you notice this as well. Alexander is um, unconsciously, at the very least, turned himself around and is heading in the wrong direction from the town. That's it. Me, Rokan, will put him back in. Where he's going. Okay, so Rokan comes around, grabs Alexander, and spins him around? Yeah, just like a friend would. This way, my friend. This way. Alexander, my friend, I think we should let Rokan here to uh, lead the group. He is used to these woods. I, I, I don't say anything, I just fall in behind. Alright. Fair enough. Okay, so you guys traipse your way back down past the marsh marshes all the way back to the town, I guess. Mm -hmm. All right, well, nothing of any particular um, import happens during that journey, and you find yourself back in um, da -ba -da -ba -da, the town and, of uh, Dodental. <laughs> Dodental, there we go. Um, and the tavern, the Hearthstone Tavern, is there. Um, lit brightly because um, it is evening when you arrive early evening um, having walked all day um, yeah what are you guys going to do you're going to go in the tavern uh, I suggest you... that uh, sorry I suggest that we take a long rest before we do anything else so everyone's healed up I think definitely Alcas is w walking straight into the tavern up to the bar Pulling out one of the gold that he... Hello, hello, pocket. hello. You're back again. It's been a long day. Take this and just quiet. And how much is that there that you're passing him? Just one gold. One gold. And just grabbing a couple of bottles. Tab for the, the night, then, is it? 
Oh, just, just, uh... Will you be staying, sir? Yes, yes. And if you have it, the floor will do. Well, we do have the one room. If you and your companions wish to share it, you can. The gold will cover it. If that will cover it, plus the drinks, then yes. Aye, aye. All right, do you hear that, Ludwiga? We need to tidy up the other room. <coughs> and she Roy comes out. Staying by Alexander. It's all tidied up, love. Ready to go. Would you like to go in there now? Would you like the key? Yes. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll take the key because Alcus is going to get really wasted and probably lose it. Um, could you bring, like, copious amounts of food? Alcus, food. Paid, paid the goods, man. Oh, yes. Here, another gold piece. Yes. yes. Copious amounts. Copious amounts. Copious <laughs> amounts of food. All right. Go insane. Okay, so they start <laughs> cooking up their stocks of food, and um, you guys go and hide in the room, I assume. Hmm? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Elkis probably stays out in the out of, out of the table just drinking and eating for now. Okay. Yeah, Al Dumbledore's got full hit points, so he, he, just, he just stays in the, the main place where the bar is and just starts reading, reading the book that was given to him. Right. Fair enough. Um, I think I will... Uh, if Alcus looks really bad still, I'm going to just donk him on the head. And uh, I'm going to use healing hands. Which I don't think I used it last time. Let's just see where it is. Somewhere in the, the big sheet here. Yeah, I did use it. Um, as an action, you can touch a creature and heal it for 2d4. Okay. So, you, you can just have... A creature, you are just a creature. Just 4 points. <laughs> uh, great. Nothing. It's not great, is it? <laughs> yeah. Not great. Alright. Very good. So uh, you heal him up a little bit. What? How many hit points have you got now, Alcas? Is anyone else looking really bad? Since I'm now technically attuned to this, uh, what is it? Right. Big question. Well, so adding it to my thing and actually attuning to it. And, and it is a staff um, that is a homebrew staff, first of all. I oh, am yeah. cool. Um, its actual name is the Eldar Staff of the Burning Lands. It's cool, yeah. It has three charges that return at midnight daily. When yep. you use a charge, you can do one of the following things. You can do telekinesis up to three times a day. It does 1d12 force damage plus your spell casting modifier per level of the caster. Cool. Otherwise, it does mm -hmm. the same as whole person. Cool. Um, can, I, can I ask a out-of-character question as well, Russell? Um, you, you I know, remember you saying the reason why I've picked up this book is because it'll be helpful for what I try... Uh, you know, change to a arcane trickster. Yeah. Um, but for the time being, um, can you give me any information at all whether or not I should do anything with the book? Like, just read it, or should I attune to it myself? Well, you can't attune to it. It's not a magic item in that sense. Okay, it's just a normal book then, but it's um, going to be helpful in the future. So it will become Sorry. helpful when you're an arcane trickster because you'll be able to copy spells out of it. Oh, sweet. So just... just, just as, as so just keep it for role, now. Roleplay wise, just keep reading it. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Um, okay, back to the staff. Uh, the other power that it has, it can either do um, charm person or frighten um, up to three times a day. Now it has three charges, so you're going to have to mix these up, right? Yeah. Um, so that power is called majesty. Cool. Didn't um, steal that from anywhere. Are you to me in a, a text so I can copy it into my... Okay. Thank you. Oh, the downside to it, I forgot to mention. Yeah, it has a downside. It's cursed. It's a downside. Oh, of course you put that last. It is, yeah. it is cursed. Um, Obviously. <laughs> obviously. It has a, a personality, it has an intelligence. 
Um, if it talks to you, it's a bad thing. Yeah, if it talks to you, it's usually a bad sign. Um, when you're using it in melee combat, you have disadvantage to all melee attacks, all dexterity saving throws. Whenever it's activated, you're a complete, you're useless. Mm -hmm. It's in control of you, not the other way around. Okay, cool. This, ma this makes you, um, gives you a weakness to bludgeoning, slashing, and piercing damage while wielded in melee combat, too. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm going to uh, drop, Russell, drop that in the chat. We get back into the action very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, I have been given a really good bit of uh, tidbit. Yep. Uh, can we use the reasoning um, for Eldan to go towards Arcane Trickster to be this book like that? Like yeah, sure. No problem. Sweet. <clears throat> no problem. Mm. Sounds like a plan. Okay, cool. Um, what are you guys going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You you spend the night there. You have a long rest. You wake up the next day. You've got your hit points back. You can hit your long yes. rest button. So you've got your spell slots back. What are you going to do? I got, I got these rings. Oh. I don't know what they do. Maybe you know what they do. Oh, I, I don't know if I know what they do. Um, you might want to ask one of the others. I could, uh, yeah, I could, I could do it's, it's rings. So, um, could I do an investigation on it or something that? Will well, just... you can make an investigation check. Um, you can do that. You, uh, none of you are silversmiths or anything like that. Um, yeah. You do not have the spell identify, which is what you actually need to be able to tell what a magic item is before you find out that it's a magic item. Uh, okay, so really. you can't really f figure anything else out uh, much about them except that they're very nice rings. They have been, yeah, don't, no point doing a roll then. No. Not at this point. Uh, so so El 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 Eldam looks at the Vesper and goes, uh, fortunately, I, I won't be able to tell you anything either. Okay, well. You magic people, are you? I uh, might, yeah, we, we are, we are sort of first in magic, uh, but this is more of a, like a, a silver, a silversmith, like a, a person that actually make stuff with metals, uh, more, would be a better person to speak to. Uh, okay. Hold on to them. However, if they start talking to you, don't put them on, okay? Can't fit them anyway. They're too big, too small for my finger. Oh. Even your pinky? No, it ain't my pinky. pinky. One day. What? What is pinky? You don't have a pinky. I have a pink. No, I have a big pinky. Mm. Still a pinky though. Right, so anyway, after you have your pinky conversation, and mm -hmm. you get up and you've had breakfast and what have you, do you have an actual plan that you're going to do? We should go I back. Think, yes, I think we need to head back to the city and report uh, back to Lord Regan about our, what we've discovered, what we've found out. We take I'll back all the items too and we get someone to check over them. Yeah, our Dumbledore's still being new to the group. Uh, at, the, at, at, at this point in time, for the last couple of uh, sessions, it will just be following along with the group until he gets a bit more backstory. So, yeah, he just agree, uh, agrees and follows the, uh, follows the group. Okay. We, we, we also... I know you didn't know a lot about this person, but uh, you did mention that it was Urania of House Kaoran that we killed. I feel like... That's something we should report back to the house. Yeah, I I, I agree. And um, again, still holding on to the stuff. It's like it's there. Didn't he fail his check? And he had no idea who it was. Um, he did know who it was. I, I he wouldn't knew have told who it was him. just not. Ah, uh, got you. I didn't. I didn't know any like um, any rumors or anything like that. Yeah, you oh, don't know. Cool. Don't know who they are, other than that the name is from the house, and you've seen them around. Okay, let's go back and get Mira and her mother, if her mother wants to join. 
Who does it that big yet? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Maybe we so. Maybe we should go to Cart or something. Because mm -hmm. they might want to bring some things with them. Well, didn't we? Didn't we come here? Didn't we come here on our horses? So let's just look outside. I think the horses yes. are long. I think the horses are long gone now. I say. In Elvish. If anyone. Uh, Al Dumbledore just nods his head. Your horses might well have been stabled by the owner of the tavern. Mm. But oh, the barkeep, did you did you stable our horses by chance? Oh yes, I saw them out there. I thought you'd think that would be a good idea. Oh, oh thank, thank you very you. much. I give them. Um, no, um, no, nothing for your troubles. You spent quite enough here already. You're embarrassing us now. I put two gold pieces mm -hmm. and five silver pieces on the counter. Well, I'll take your two gold and your silver. Thank you very much, and I'll stash it under here. Thank you so much, sir. You'll be leaving soon, will you? Have you done about with the business that you came here to see about? Yes, I think we have. Oh, well. So we won't be expecting any more of them stories then from Mira? Yes. I think we. I think our, our friend over here, and I look at the spear, is, is, is going to take her. Oh, really? You're going to take her away somewhere, are you? Mm-hmm. Oh, and you've spoken to a mother about that. I see, I see. Well, uh, good luck with all of that then. <laughs> Thank you. She you. Uh, useful to someone, is she? I think she is very useful. I Everyone see. Everyone keeps uh, seeing her as kind of ditzy and useless, but I don't see that. I see. Well, um, well, each to their own, I suppose. I don't know much about city life and whatnot, but uh, you take her there and see if you can make something of her. That's a good idea. I'm sure her mother be pleased about that. I, right. I think you should also know that oh. those stories that she was telling oh, yes. actually turned out to be true, and there was a necromancer bringing the dead back to life in the forest around your town. True, you say? Very true. If, if those yep. stories had not reached us and we... A necromancer. Yes, if we had not come here and stopped them, your town could have been in serious trouble, so you actually owe her thanks. Can you make an insight check, please, Elkas? Uh, 17. For a moment there, you get this impression that he's known something all along. Your face tells me that you know some more of this. No, what? No, no, no. I know nothing. We have been more than I... hospitable here, and I would hate to... Uh, oh, yes, of course. I would hate to ruin this friendship. Terribly, terribly so... hospitable. I'm so tired now. It must be time to close up about now, don't you think? You ah, should no, probably I be think, heading to bed. I think you answer our questions. Of what, what do you know? <sighs> what are you not telling us? Well, the yeah, trouble is that every time I try to talk about it, gobbly down ba doo da da toads and mustard and um, flying pigs and uh, cats and all uh, the trees and... and uh, ah! He, don't stop speaking in tongues. I Say what you mean. He can't. Okay. Can you write? He's, he's just trying to say it. He can't say it. I can try again, but, um, you know, rats and sewers and cats and dogs and streets and all the, 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 the mud. Can I make an arcana check to see if he's been, like, confused in some yeah, way? Yeah, I'll, I'll do the same as well. Yeah, okay. Do that with your magnifying crystal. I got a 22 for my arcana check. And just to be safe, I got a 24. His, his behavior is consistent with some sort of enchantment, perhaps. You don't know what it would okay. be, but... Sir, can you try... <sighs> but I... Telling us, ...telling us the opposite of what you're trying to say? Oh, I see. So what definitely didn't happen was that um, there were most certainly uh, no uh, no fellows of, uh, you know, arcane and type of... Uh, appearance or attire come in here at all not not on any occasion have they ever come in here um and they most certainly didn't sit near the front on the left hand side in the table in the little round table in the in the in the alcove you know the one i'm talking about um 
And uh, they, they certainly were not, any of them, wearing any robes of the color red at any time. Um, certainly one of them did not carry the staff that I saw your friend return with. Which does beg the question whether or not you might have murdered him. Because I don't know who he was. For all I know, we surely only defended ourselves. he was traveling but through the town, of course. He did not have that Asked us all to keep his presence quiet. Told many of our patrons to leave and not to talk about it. And um, most certainly did not cause me to close down the tavern entirely so that they could talk and, uh, alone in the, in the main hall. And I certainly didn't hear a word of what they said. And if I could, I wouldn't remember it anyway. So you know exactly what they said and you remember all of it. You just are unable to tell us. Something like now, that. Speaking speaking the truth now, straightforward. Aye. Do you want to tell us? Well, to be perfectly uh, frank with you, sir, uh, I don't know if them two are coming back here and what they do when they find out you've stolen their staff. That's not your concern. You can tell tell them that we left your town with the staff. If you want, you can cover your own ass. It m means no difference to us. I see. I see. Well, then, um... You've got any proof that you've killed any of these so-called undead creatures, or are you just carrying the staff of a li very living man that I saw a few nights back? Uh, out of character, so before we answer to this, well, so all we have at the moment is the staff in the book, right? And an orb. Uh, from, and, and the hawk. Orb. Uh, orb. Oh, yeah, that's right, the sparrow picks it up. Okay, sweet. Mm. If you want, you can go out there and have a look at bodies. They're still there. Here in bodies the freezing the night, you want me to go and look in the bodies of the undead? You're telling me there's undead around and you want me to go and find them now? Oh dear. You should we have brought some of their heads dead. back with them. You, you want us to drag undead bodies that we have then killed back into your town? just so we can? No, it no, no. I just thought we perhaps a head or a finger or something might have proved the point, you know. But a head of a finger of an undead is a head of a finger of someone dead anyway. I told you, you could have well, I suppose you could have, you could have, uh... Yes, I suppose you're right. You could have dug up a body such as that from one of the grave sites around here. That doesn't really uh, appeal to uh, anyone's uh, sense of taste either, does it? No, mm. but given the stories, given how hospitable they are, given the nature of the things that you definitely didn't overhear. <sighs> Look, how can I help you? How can I help you, sir? How can I help you? What can I do? I don't want any more of this nonsense in our town. I'd be perfectly happy for them too never to come back here, and I'd be just as happy to never see the likes of you around here either, unless you brought more of that gold that you brought already last time. I mean, your friend out there is perfectly our reasonable. Is you know. To leave this town, however, the one in red may come back and have questions. And should he have questions, we don't want you to get in any trouble for this. Well, so neither do me. I. I mean, what do I do? Do I leave the fucking town? No, you stay here, but you answer him honestly when he comes. We are travelers. We are heading from here. It's a long journey, but. I believe our next stop will be uh, Vane Gate. You're off to Vane Gate. That's a long way. It is a long way, but these are important things, and we have to take them back. I just, I just whisked for him and go. I can't take that day, girl. You're an idiot, Alexander. <laughs> can I? Can can after hearing that, can I dump because uh, uh, Jordan, you speak Elvish, right? Yes, I do. Yeah, our Dumbledore just uh, looks at Alexander and curses at him in Elvish. What? What? You damn fool! Oh, why? Huh? <laughs> I just, I just have a little chuckle to myself. I'm, I, I'm having a midlife crisis, and the mind's going a wee bit. Right. Fair enough. Mm. 
So, are you coming or going then? You've been here for a while, you've stayed the night, you've been fed. I believe, I believe uh, once we collect our horses, we'll so be on our way. So, you'd like your horses to back Vain now Gate. then? Vane Gate, is it? Hmm. Yeah. And not Dagdagio. No. Not Dagdagio, no, no, no. No, Vane Gate. So, you'll be heading north then? He goes out yeah. and goes and collects the horses and brings them around the front of the building. <laughs> I go get horses. I, I, I go learn the map system. Right. I'm going to get horses. All right, so you go out with them to get the horses, and between you, you bring all the horses around, tack and harness yeah. and all. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, Alcas, you're finishing up a drink. Food. Yep. Like a little baggie. All right, so you're stuffing your bags full of food. Um, Alcas is stuffing his mouth full of alcohol. Um, yes, I'm definitely giving another gold and grabbing a couple of bottles to go. All right, Rokan is bringing horses. Alda and, Aldelmador. And once he's done that, he'll go and get some food too because... Okay, because he's Rokan and he eats. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Rokan um, is eating. Russell, yes. Just, just, I've, I've been thinking about this since it happened. Um, mm -hmm. With... With what happened with me with the, with the orc, um, yes. it, is my situation very similar to like Jordan's with Alexander's, like, can I talk about mine or is it like only, is it too horrible for me to remember or something like that? You can talk about it for sure, yeah. You can describe it, you can, it's up to you, it's your character. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll pro I'll, I'll it's, it's about how brave you are at role playing it, that's really the point. Yeah, that's why I've been thinking about it. But I'll right. give you inspiration oh, oh, if you oh, do. Oh, yeah, I've got inspiration, so that could work. Yeah. Um, well, anyway, we'll get out of this barkeep's head. Uh, uh, not head. Um, Hair. Face. All right. So we better. We 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 better make a move, guys. Right. Um, well, I'm going to go to the mirrors. All right. So you I'll, head off down the I'll, street. I'll um. I'll wait to see what Alexander does. All right, so uh, you're going to Mirrors for Sparrow. All right, the door opens up and there's the mother there. You're back again. That was quick, wasn't it? Oh, I mean, it was all nice. You, you did the yeah. job then, did you? It's what you said yeah. you was gonna do. Mm -hmm. Mira said you slewed a lot of a lot of them skeletons the other night. Oh not, yes, and not she before. helped too. She's so brave. She did say that. She's quite excited about all this. Druiding, is it? Is what you're going to take her to do, is it? Druiding? Yes. I, I want see. her to be a part of the Circle of Everflame. Circle of Everflame. To hear that, Mira. So proud of you, girl. She if comes out. If you want, if you want, you can come along with us. Where would we go? Well, I'm going to take you to... Dagdagio, because that's where. Uh, oh no no! Boat. Had had enough of that city. Don't want to live anywhere near Dagdagio. I've been there it's, twice already. It's not to live, but it's simply to meet up with the druids there. Oh yeah. I'm not sure when they'll be heading onwards, um, and I, I'm not sure if I will go along with them. But I think Mira should go with them instead, and take you with us. We don't know nothing about do druids. We don't know nothing about druids. Is they safe? They're very safe. You said they had a circle of fire, did you? Uh, Everflame. Everflame. Mm -hmm. I see. They yeah. good then for druids? Oh, um, to me, yes. Um, they. There is a bit of discourse there, but. So what? Oh, but what? <laughs> sorry. Well, with, within my clan, there are uh, there are a few leaders, and oh, some yeah. people decide that um, they they want to go a certain direction, while the other ones are like no. So there will always be that sort of behavior when it comes to groups. But we we try and set you know settle it diplomatically. I see. <laughs> So you do a lot of singing and dancing then? We do. We love to party. Oh. 
we love to I don't know Mira, Mira doesn't like that sort of thing she's she's a good girl she likes to stay at home and keep to herself she doesn't like people well, no I think it's not sure it's a good idea oh she if that's what she wants then have, why don't we have a chat with her she comes out and she looks quite excited are you <laughs> your mother is saying that you don't like to go out and, and meet people I do so like to meet people mother oh hey don't, you don't have to be like, you don't have to be mean to your mother well, she's been like this to me all my life, hasn't she? What? Mira, don't be so cruel. I'm just your poor mother. I've been trying to look after you since your dad was gone. And all those horrible things that happened back then. And all the things we've been through and all the rumours and the stories and the humiliation we've suffered because of... Stop it, mother. Stop it. She says, I want to go with the druid. I want to learn this druiding. She comes over and clings to your arm. Well, there's nothing I can do to stop you then, is there? I can see that. You've made up your mind. I suppose I'll have to do something for you. She goes off and she gets a small bag and comes back um, with a, a coin bag and a, and a, a walking stick. Um, kind of like a long staff, but it's not heavy enough to hit anyone with. Um, I mean, it, you could hit them, but it would break. Um, and, a f and and a robe, basically, a few pieces like that, a few little bits and pieces. And she dresses her up with a couple of pieces of old jewelry from her old days, um, and tidies her up, wipes the tears off her face with her thumbs, Aww. and um, sends you off into the big wide world with Mira. I hope you never forget where you've come from, Mira. I come from here, Dirt and Tal. Exactly. Yeah. Remember that. Yeah. Yes, after, after you've gone through all the druidry and you start to branch out on your own, you should come here and see your mother. Oh yeah, that's a good idea, isn't it? So tell me more about this druidry, she says as she starts walking along with you and fade to black. Um, we did not have sex. Where do you, where, where do you, yeah, but I didn't want to have a big long conversation about D&D &D druid mechanics. Um, so where do you go? Are you, are you going to walk back to Van Gaeta, are you, with her? Um, well, I'm going back to the tavern. Thank you. Okay, sorry, to the um, tavern. And then yeah. we will share a horse. A horse? Well, that's One how horse. we got here. Right, okay. <laughs> Very um, good. So you put her on the horse with you? Yeah. What are the rest of you doing? Um, oh, you go, you go, Rick. I'm going to use my draft horse. All right. Now, I just want to make one, one thing clear here. This is, this is Zoom, and Zoom is kind of sucky for picking out people's voices and stuff. If you start saying something, just finish it. Just, just keep going. You have to you have to be a little bit aggressive with the Zoom to, to get yourself heard, so don't feel bad about it. And that's also why this works. What did you going to say, Alex? I was just trying something. Oh, you were me. doing this. I thought you were time-outing. Okay. All right, so you go back to the tavern. You find these guys getting on their horses and all prepared to ride off somewhere. Oh, before we head off, Alex Alexander, could you please give Mira... Uh, the armor that you gave her the other night? Um, I cast Mage Armor on <coughs> Mira, but instead of it's blue, it's now black. Okay. Interesting. Well, that's a different change. Okay. Here, <laughs> Mira, okay. have two berries as well. Alright. So yeah, uh, before before we before we head off, uh, I'll, I'll then looks at Elkett and goes, um, right 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 beside me when we head off. Okay, yes, so yes, for sure. at this point, I'm seeing you guys kind of standing on your horses, sitting on your horses, sort of circling in the street, um, preparing to go in a direction. Which direction do you eventually go in? 
I'm still not clear about that. Is there a way that we could go towards Vane Gate and then turn? Turn where? Back to Dagdagiel? <laughs> like, we know the, in the exit to Dagdagiel. It would be a much the longer... Well, yeah, you would go back the way you came to Dagdagiel, obviously. Um, okay. To go to Vane Gate, you would be heading north along the road that would eventually... takes you generally in the direction of that you've, that you've been coming from, but right, you, you we went cross-country. We head towards Dagdagil, and uh, as we're leaving, call out that, ah, it'll be good to get back on the sea again once we get to that shipping yard, and then off to Van Gate from there. Okay. All right, so you, you make this little ruse as you leave town. You want to make a deception check for me, please, Sean? Should we just roll initiative uh, now? That is an 18. An 18, okay. It's a very good deception. Okay, nice. You, you pull it off with flying colors. Um, and everybody's kind of surprised, perhaps, by how, how well worded it was and how... Um, you know, in context it was at the time. I think no, I'm some... not um, busy eating a chicken leg. That's fair. There was some genuine, like, passion for getting back out to the sea in it. Right, right. Some actual true passion, because that's a thing that Alcas has got history with. Yes. All right, so you head back towards Dagdagio, and you get back to the necropolis. Um, yep, time out. Yeah. Um, I was wondering because mm -hmm. it's quite a long, it's quite a long trip uh, back. Um, the reason why I wanted Alcas beside me is because uh, Sean, you also speak thieves can't, correct? Uh, yes, but it's not a spoken language. Mm, it's like a, it's like a, like it's a like hand signs and stuff. Yeah, um, but it takes quite a while to portray. I think it's like four times longer than normal speech or something like that. And you may or may, may or may not know whether or not he speaks it either, to be fair. Yeah, uh, yeah, true, true. Although, no, he never, he never says in character if he does. Yeah, true. Now, nah, we'll, we'll just head to the Necropolis. I, I, had, I had a, I had a, like a, a plan written out to tell, uh, Alcats about what happened through Thieves Camp, but that's you, you've got a point there. I probably don't know if he speaks or not. So, right, um, and yeah. As well, if, if while we're writing, yep. if Alexander still hasn't taken his, like, hasn't let go of the staff at all, and is still carrying it with him, yep. I'm definitely full on, still really suspicious, and have a dagger up my sleeve. So you're still holding an action, basically. I at all times until he puts that staff down, I'm holding an action if he turns hostile towards the group. Okay. Actually, that, okay, that 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 well, actually works out. Um, is there a way that like, uh, Alex could be like ahead of the the head of the group on his horse, and like me and me and Alcas sort of like drop back a little bit or something, uh, so he's kind of out of earshot but still just speaking normal like common. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Um. So yeah. Uh. Then um, rides up to rides up to Alcas and goes, uh, "Slow your horse a little bit. I've got something to tell you." But we need to keep it out of Alex's earshot. I'll be like fumbling in a pack, like I'm getting trying to get more drinks out, and that's why we're riding slow. All right. So, uh, yeah, uh, you notice you're uh, quite on edge about uh, about Alex, but I've I've kind of been the same. Um, I haven't told anyone this yet, uh, but back in back in the tent when I held the ball, I um. I heard, a, I heard a, a voice emanating, but it wasn't clear. It and wasn't so much... I saw, I saw a face. Mm. Um, I have a suspicion that he might be going through the same thing. So I don't, I don't know if it's related or not, but I can tell you now, that thing that I saw terrified me to the core. I, 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 I've never felt anything like that before. I... I've spent some time with him now, and he's normally quite upbeat and happy and positive, and ever since he picked up that star, 
he hasn't put it down and he's been cold and distant. Mm. I I worry that like the, where we got these items from, it wasn't a good place, and I worry that they're affecting him. Yeah, I I as a as a semi sort of like person that's first in not magic per se, but magical elements as well. Um, if it affected me as much as it did them, imagine what it, would, it could could be or is doing to him. Yes, I. He seems to be happy with uh, going back to Dagdaefield, where we can get the item properly inspected. Yeah, I think, and I, I think we just keep an eye on them because there's definitely something not right. For sure. Yes. Yeah. I, I don't think there's much else we can do at this point. Though. And at that point, um, Elden looks up and he, 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 he sees Alexander's head starting to turn and we end conversation there. All right. Fair, fair enough. <clears throat> so riding forth, um, eventually you go through and past the necropolis and out the other side. You travel forward for another few hours Eventually, you get to the Druidic camp, um, where Vespera, you meet with your elders and what have you. Um, to keep things on track, let's make a persuasion check to see if you can convince them that uh, they need this girl and they don't shouldn't just uh, throw her on the fire and have her for dinner. <laughs> no, no, that's my people, not her. All right. Uh, yeah. Can I can I also join in the conversation to? Give advantage for this. Um. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Love to know how you do that. Um. I do want to know how you're going to do that. <laughs> what are you going to say, Elcast? That's going to give you would give that's her advantage. Seven, um. I, I. I stress that we were on a. Uh, on a mission and there were unholy things happening and this this young girl she was instrumental into us rebalancing the nature of the small town okay that sounds like a, a fair persuasion um so you want to roll again with it for your advantage i already did um it's a 20 in total 20 in total okay very it's good okay 18 plus two they are very thankful to receive this child into their ranks. Um, you've chosen well, and so they go about um, anointing her and, and clothing her and um, taking her into the, the, the most basic outer um, learning group. What I wanted to tell them was that, um, <clears throat> so she's gone through a lot of trauma in her life. As have we all Vespera, that is why you've brought her here then, I'm sure. More yeah. than the average person, no doubt. Definitely. She is a, a wonderful candidate, and she needs to go through that reborn stage. Yes, well, you do remember, Vespera, that she is a candidate, and there is no guarantee that she will pass our tests and requirements. I know. What happens she if she fails? There's plenty of other jobs. She'd be better off in Veingate than with us. Who knows? Uh, Who knows? I'll take Mira's side and... Um, it's not a great um, life to be a hanger-on to the circle. Right. I'll take Mira to the side. All right. Uh, and I will tell her that... Um, so you need to do your very best here. Yeah. Okay. So, so... You've gone through a lot of stuff in your life. And we all know that. We've all gone through our own stuff. Oh, no. Nah, it was nothing. It was nothing. It wasn't nothing. I'm going to learn magic now, Vespera. You will. But you've got to uh, stay on task. You've got to make sure that you take in as much as you can. And well, you've got I'll your little focus there. I'll do my that. best. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Concentrate on this. These are from the trees around your home. Do you it's think that... To you. Do you th is that... Is that the arch druid? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> um, 
He is actually my uncle. Oh. His name's gone now. Right, okay. <laughs> I'll get everyone's names together. Well, I'll be here when you come back then, I suppose. All right. You look great in red. Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful. Never had colours before. Not in my whole <laughs> life. Enjoy them. They're yours now. <clears throat> She bows to you and thanks you, Vespera. Um, she makes a, a some form of etiquette check and rolls a natural 16. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, she seems to have um, picked that much up. One day you can have your own little, little moth or you can have anything. You can have a little fox if you like, a little firefox. Just yeah. like Bonnell's one. His, his name is Mozilla. <laughs> <laughs> Fridges abound. It's true, though. <laughs> That's terrible. Um, All the drinks have gone to Elkis and it's just off to the side throwing up. Right. Shh. So, long story short, you've broken my verisimilitude, and that's where the scene ends, just like that. Um, cut to the next scene. You guys uh, head out of the druidic encampment back to Dug, Dug, Dag, 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 Yell. Um, you get to the major great sally port at the front of the city. Um, the first of five massive concentric walls, one behind the other, each one higher than the last. They look like a squat pyramid from a distance pressed into the mountains. Um, and within you can see the wide squat towers of the houses of the assembly of princes. Um, and the light gleams down from above. You can see soldiers moving about on the ramparts above. You can see archers and um, crossbowmen and so forth. But uh, Alexander, I'm going to assume you're going to take them in through the side door. Um, or are you going I to go through them? I was thinking that I've, I've actually snuck away on my horse and have gone to the gate and gone through already without them realising. So I didn't do right. a check. You make a stealth check for that, most certainly. Yeah, but why that was a natural a natural 20. That was a natural 20. Wow. I, I can't... Come on. I'm not going to argue with a natural 20. That's when that's the gods telling me what the story is doing. So, um, okay. So you take your natural 20 and you fuck off. And yep. you end up at the ta at, back at the, at the city. You go in alone. You get to House Kaelrin alone uh, in advance of everyone. The rest of you can make perception checks at this point to see uh, how far behind you are. It's going to be a matter of minutes or hours. I'm far too distracted. Yeah, I was going to say Vespera would roll yes. with disadvantage, actually. but. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. I can do that. Nine for Alcas, fourteen. fourteen uh, a natural for twenty for Barry, so that was a twenty-two. Wow. Okay, so <laughs> Barry, you see him right off. They just roll for me uh, forever now, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, I roll. I ride after him. Okay. Do you go stealthily too? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's get a much. stealth check for Barry to see if anybody notices Barry leaving. Rokan. Seventeen. Yeah, okay, 17, that's pretty good. Uh, are, we doing, are we doing self checks or just self, are we all doing self just, just Rokan is making oh, stealth nice. checks. Um, you can okay. make perception checks to mm -hmm. notice Rokan leaving. And um, is, is that yours, Vespera, is it? Okay, was that with disadvantage? Yes, it was. Okay, so you notice Rokan leave, but you didn't oh, see him. Oh, we're doing perception. Yes. I don't notice anything. I don't notice either of them. 23. All right, so Aldelmador, you notice Rokan leaving as well. <laughs> Um, and Vespera, you, you're hearing horses. They sound like your group. Um, one of them leaves outside the tent that you're dealing with uh, Mira in. Okay. Um, so Rokan's run off. How far behind uh, him are you, Rokan, do you think? Uh, not very far, because he didn't go inside for his standards. Right. So you just stayed yeah. back with the horses. So when yeah, he took the horse. Yeah, because everybody's afraid of me when I'm walking this way. Right. Okay. Well, I think it's fair that you guys have got like 20 minutes on everybody else, or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Is that fair to everyone? So it it was um it was me. Uh, sorry, holding up the sorry. Uh, it was me and Vespera that saw them leave, right? Yeah, you saw <laughs> Rokan leave. Not so okay. much Alexander, yeah. though. Yeah. Okay, and they've got a bit of distance. Okay, so I literally, I, I just grab uh, the spare by the, by the, 
by the hand and go, we need to go now. What do you mean? Uh, Rokan just left. Yes, we'll find them. Yeah. Wait, where's uh, Alexander? That's what I'm worried about. <coughs> he's gone. Okay, let's go inside. Come on. Come on, drunkie. Let's go. Not like... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Talking to Alkis. <laughs> Alright. He catches up to Alexander. <coughs> Alright. And he says, Alexander, where are you going? I... I dash with my horse. I'm trying to get away from these guys and get into the city before they can get to me. Okay. I'm right beside you. I think I that's going to be an animal handling check contested there. Um, I will say that Rokan is going to be the better rider. He's a fucking ranger and you're an old man and a sorcerer. <laughs> uh, we have both plus two to our animal handling checks. Well, it okay. depends on the roles. Well, it depends on the roles then. Let's get animal handling checks from both of you. That was 11 for me and a four for uh, Rokan. Okay, uh, Rokan, you're not catching up with him. I'll keep an eye on him then. Okay. Um, actually, can I can I give my... Oh, wait. Has Rokan used his inspiration yet? No, he hasn't. Do you oh, want to use it now? I'll use it now. Okay, Rokan. Okay, sure. I didn't even know I had one. Um, because I was, I was going to give you He got another four with inspiration. Oh, <laughs> even with inspiration, roll the exact same number. Roll the exact same. Okay, I'll just keep up with him then. All right, well, you see him get to the to the, to the the front gate, the sally port. He goes in through the, the first gate, but then he takes a side, disappears out of sight in the courtyard. And by the time you get into the courtyard and the sally port, he's gone. At which point you realize that he's taken one of the side doors that are forbidden to general public access. Um, at this point, Alexander, um, you take a series of tunnels that go through the interior of the walls themselves and over bridges crossing from one wall to the next, moving further to the interior of the city through secret silent passages. I will get you to make a survival check though, and if you roll a 1, you may become irrevocably lost forever. Cool. Um, and just with that, I imagine myself, like, with my cloak kind of flowing behind me, sort of like, um, um, Maleficent when she's going down the stairs and stuff, you know, right. the flowing cape. But you're on a horse, riding, you're, on a horse? Yeah. you're riding horses, you're riding a horse inside a tunnel, inside a inside wall. A tunnel. Cool. Um, I got a six, so not a one. Okay. I'm not lost. All right. Well, that's a good thing. Uh, you, well, you kind of are lost. You're just not irrevocably lost. Yeah. Um, Rokan, what do you, where do you go once you realize he's not there? I mean, you know that he comes from House Kaoran, so there's a strong possibility that he's going to be there. Okay, I start heading there. All right. Well, as you approach the gates, the second gate at the back of the sally port, the guards step in front of you. Oh, who goes there? Rokan. Yeah, and where are you I going? I work here. With who? What business do you have? I beside Alexander. Don't know an Alexander. You got any papers? What house do you work for, mercenary? What's the name of the bloody house again? I can't remember. Kaelrin. Kaelrin, Kael Kael methinks. Kaelrin? They look at each other for a minute. Kaelrin, you say. What's the name of Lord Kaelrin, then? You know his name? I say his name because I wouldn't know. You can make a history check. You've never met him. You've never met him, so you may well not know his name. Fourteen, um... Hmm... Mm -mm. One moment, please. Veldrith Kaelrin. Veldrith Kaelrin. So you're saying that if I were to send a messenger to Kaelrin right now, they would know who you were? Yes. And they'd vouch for you. Yes. All right, Orc. We'll let you in. But you best have accommodation there. You better not be on the street by curfew. Yes. Pass. They step aside. Pass. He passes. All right. Um, Alex, can you make another survival check, please? Certainly. I'll go to the kitchen. Hey, hey. What did you say? 
18. An 18. All right, you find your way back to the house Kaelrin. Um, but round about the same time as it may take Rokan to get there because he got, uh, you know, you got lost and he got stopped. Um, so, Rokan, how do you go about finding House Kaelrin? You want to make another survival check to see if you can find your way there on the surface roads? Okay. All right. He got a 16. 16, okay. You make your way there. Okay. Now, Alexander, I think you get there just a little bit before him, but not long. So, okay. Once you get there, you come out in through the stable. Um, now I'm going to actually, actually weirdly enough, have a map for this. Um, I think, I think I do, I think I do, do I, tell me I do, tell me I do, somewhere along here I've got a map for you, not that one, not that one, what the fuck. Okay, I don't have a map for you. Never mind. I thought I had it all prepped for this particular thing, but never mind. That's fine. Um, okay, so you come up through the through the wall out into the stable, um, which is the ground floor of the of the house, um, and you see uh, the usual fellow over there banging iron and making you know horseshoes and what have you, doing stuff. Um, the armory is half of this place. Yes, that's right. Bjorn. Bjorn. Well, if there's a guy called Bjorn, wouldn't he come from Switzerland? No. That's another fridge. Two fridges, three fridges, and you're out. Um, you, you forgot to hold up the tea. Yep. So there's no Switzerland, but there are fridges? Yeah. There are fridges well, this is what happens when you break the DM's verisimilitude, that then there's a hole punctured in reality that fridges fall from. See, that's, um, that's how it works. I, is... I just ignore them and I start going upstairs to my room. Okay, you get to your room. You're still and carrying I your put, staff, uh, I take it. I put the bar down. Very well. You hear a voice in your head. You have a mission. You must complete. You have much to do. Serve me and I will help you. You will gain great power. I, I, just, I just think... Yes, I, I must do this. All right. You I... must find the Book of Israel. I need to make a note of that. Uh, Russell. Yes, sir. I'm guessing that's the book that I have. Nope. Oh, cool. That's a, that's you, a new book. You can guess all you like. I, I, yeah, guess away. But no, you, no. Sorry. You have to watch the Vangate Chronicles to find out about the Book of Israel. There's a there's yeah. a dangling that in front of you as a as as bait. Um Right, so what do you do? You go into the room Alexander? I, Alexander? Uh yes, I, I go into my room and I, I put down like a lock or whatever you would do to like right. the door so no one okay. can actually get in. So you bar the door, you bolt it I from the, the inside. Door. Yeah. Okay. Um, I then go into my room. Okay. And hide the staff. All right. Can you make a sleight of hand check to see how well you hide the staff. Um. I got an eighteen. All right. So it's hidden pretty well. Okay. Cool. And it's also like my room, so it's kind of like no one goes in. Yeah, no one would know where anything is or what's behind anything or anything like that. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. it's pretty well hidden. Okay, hidden. we can talk uh, more about the specifics of its hiddenness um, in the future. But whilst yeah. you've just hidden the staff, what do you, what do, you do very m right after that? I um, kind of compose myself and begin to act like... I was before, and I unbar the door and open it, and then there is... Then Rokan approaches the door, oddly enough. Yes, Rokan, you're just approaching the door when it opens, and Alexander's standing in front of you looking fairly normal. Without the staff? Without the staff. Where's staff? I got rid of it. Do I believe him? Can you make an insight check, please, for Barry? For Rokan? Certainly. Can I make a deception check to see if I... Uh... You can, you can, but now it's contested, so yes. 
cool. So it's a 14. I got a 19. You got a 19 and he got a 14. Okay. Yes. Uh, his, he seems to be telling the truth, Barry. Mm. As much as a sorcerer would ever tell the truth. Mm. <laughs> uh, okay. He, um, he says, show me stuff. I can't show it to you. It's gone. And I pulled the belt servant. Where? It gone. I threw it away. Oh. Fuck, I'm not going to believe that. <laughs> he was holding it all the <coughs> way back to the thing like it was something. It's fair to say that it's a bit suspicious and you, you might not believe what he's saying, but okay. yeah, his no, expression is, he's got a dead cold expression like he's telling the truth but the words coming out of his mouth are a little deceptive a little um unbelievable to you at least yeah that's fair now meanwhile what is everybody else doing you guys have seen rokan and alexander leave you're a few minutes behind them where um, are you at i actually want to go find drizan drizan <laughs> yeah I, drizan. I have no idea where to begin with that but i'm thinking where the sheriffs are <laughs> where the well, okay town guard lies. All right. Well, uh, I, yep. Sorry to throw to throw it in there as well. I know a certain guard captain who may know. You keep, you keep mentioning this, Captain Bennett. I hear it when you're sleeping, you're like Captain Bennett. Oh. He's an inspiration to us all. You're an inspiration to us all. No, it's just that. But anyway, we gotta go find Jason, okay? So let's find him. Okay, so how are you gonna go about finding Drazan? Well, I would like to find where the town, where the guard is. Okay, well, the guard is situated in a number of places across the city. They have guard mm -hmm. towers um, at the ends of the walls. Um, right. They have guard towers near the gates. They have little keeps um, that they inhabit. They have barracks um, and, you know, areas that are kind of locked off and belong to them. Um, well, I so think you can... I will go to the area that we, we found him originally. Each of these guard tower areas seems to have a, its own jurisdiction, and they seem to divide those jurisdictions up into the same as the houses. So you tend to find that a guard tower that's under in the area of a particular house probably is being influenced by that house. Okay. Um, so we found him where the gallant was. Right. Okay. So the gallant. Um, the gallant. Yep. Lieutenant. Lieutenant Trezan, by the way. Oh, I'm Lut sorry. Lieutenant. Lieutenant of the watch. Well, he only introduced himself as Drazan. Yes. No. I don't Did remember. You? No. <laughs> when he was outside, I'm pretty sure he introduced himself as Le Lieutenant Drazan to me. No, so... he didn't introduce himself to you at all. Yes, he did. He did. I'm sure of it. He, he did. Because that's when I told him about... Uh... On the way out? This might have been oh, before you turned up in the last session. Yes, I think it might have been. He definitely did talk to us outside because we were with the drunks. Yeah, and we yeah. yeah told he him did. about the shop. He, yeah. he, he snubbed you guys, though. No, he didn't. He talked to no, us. He did talk to them. Oh, no, no, he, he did, but he snubbed you guys when you asked him for a thing. Okay. 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 Watch it. You've, you've probably <laughs> watched it more than anybody else, so I, I'll this take you. This must have been a session that I wasn't part of because I have no recollection yeah. of this. But anyway, let's go find this All right, so what I'll get you to do, mate, is make a investigation checks, please. See if you can figure out where Drazan is. Okay. All of us just Vespera. Uh, well, anyone that's helping Vespera can make a check, or you can give her the help action and give her advantage on her check. Well, apparently I don't know this person, so I'll just give the help action. Yeah, I'll give the help because I don't know anything. 
Okay, so you might be like, oh, well, I've seen the guards are hanging out over there and blah, 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 and so you give her some general tips on where to find him. Excellent, and guidance. Okay. I believe in myself. All right, so with guidance, with guidance in your heart, yeah. you can roll mm -hmm. your investigation check with advantage for Sparrow. Uh, so that will be uh, 18. 18, okay. All right, you do find Drazan. It does take a couple of hours. And you've so, wandered around mm -hmm. the city all over the place. Um, are you the others with you, or are you by yourself? Um, I, they helped yeah. you, so I guess... Yeah, I'm probably with All right, so the three of you together, all right. <clears throat> After a little while um, of tracking him down, you find him at the Rantalan guardhouse. And one of the, one of the soldiers takes you into his, um, his quarters, if you like, um, it is both his quarters as well as his office, and he has a little training room off to the side, um, and an arming suite. Um, and he sees you coming in, and he um, he nods to you, and quickly heads into one of the rooms, opening the door, and um, pushes out some chairs. Well, you again. Curious. Yeah. Was not expecting to see you so soon. And you have companions. Uh, yes, this is Alkis and Al Dalmador. And I am Lieutenant Drazan, City hand, Watch. Um, we've come here because, well, I have some alarming news. Alarming news. Oh. A friend of mine, he has a very nasty looking weapon. And we think he might be, uh, he's acting odd around it. We think it might be persuading him to do things. You think he's found some nasty weapon that's persuading him to do things? We, we tracked down what we believe to be the source of those little beings that you see you were tracking. Can you, first of all, make a persuasion check, please, Vespera? Sure. This is not my forte. This is definitely not my forte. <laughs> yeah, no. I think it was too late to use guidance. Um, Five? Actually, yeah. actually okay. you know what? I'll be nice. I'll give you my inspiration to, to, if Russell allows you to roll again. Yeah, okay. I'll let you do that. Guidance. No, I'm not going to do that, that's fine. A little bitter. Ten. A little bit better. <laughs> he looks at you very skeptically, then he looks at you again a little bit less skeptically, but still still quite skeptically. Um, and he says, look, I, I don't have time for this. We have actual people better getting killed on the streets, and um, right now I have some big problems over in the market square. What exactly are you suggesting here? What do you think I'm going to do about this? We need your help to get it away from him and to perhaps destroy it. Um, and I'll, I'll bring out the orb. You take out the orb from inside and your thing. You, as, soon, as soon as Vesper brings that out, um, what, sorry, uh, remind me again what, what's his name? Is the lieutenant or whatever? Uh, Drazan, yeah. Drazan, yeah. So I, I, I turn to Drazan and, and I, I say, Look me in the eyes. I've seen what that orb can do, and what she's saying is the truth. So I was wondering if I could roll a, a persuasion check for that. Yep, you can do that. <clears throat> Four. Damn it. <laughs> and I just used my inspiration. Damn, Damn it. it. But uh, you know what? I thought it was earnest enough that I'll give you an inspiration to use in the future. No, oh, thank you. So we, despite the fact that you oh, failed at it, but never mind. Yeah. Yep. Alcas, you were going to say something? Last time we met, you were tracking down a fiend that... I was following a story. Yes, well... We I never saw a fiend. Story. We have tracked the source of those fiends, and when we found the camp which this person was staying in, we were attacked by undead creatures... You better sit down, perhaps. Perhaps you should all sit down. Uh, 
I think that'll be necessary. Yeah, I take a seat. He closes the door. I take a seat with the orb on my left. I, 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 sit, I sit far away from that orb. I think it's time for you to tell me exactly what's going on. And at that, we're going to quit our stream tonight. That's that's the end of our game. We have run out of time. Um, Barry and Alexander, I'll give you one last chance to say anything if you want anything. Um, All right. Alexander, we go see Uncle now. And with that, I quickly yell out, bring this man some food and slip into my door. <laughs> Okay, so close it and bar it again. All right, so this time you're in your bedroom inside the room, and he's in the room in the living room. Is that good? Yeah, that's fine. Yep. Okay, and I'm assuming that the staff is hidden in the bedroom because that would make the most sense. Yes. Um, okay, um, and so you guys are at Alexander's apartment at House Kalrin, and you guys are with Lieutenant Drazan. Yeah. Um, at the beginning of the next session. Okay. Yeah, we've all we've all just sat down, and he's just asked us to right tell the truth and guess him. So that sounds like the story. Okay, so thank you guys. What we will do now is a raid. Woo! Yes, let's go raid someone. Um, One. So <laughs> I, I should really bring up the Twitch channel. I have not had it up for some time. Well, we need your numbers, so you should have a Twitch channel going on in the background, so that <laughs> everybody that's here should at least be watching, so we have at least six people on the, on our list of, uh, you know, viewers. It's a bit sad if there's more people or fewer people watching us than there are in the group. Okay, so let's do a raid. I do have a question around the streaming. Yes. If we are going to be streaming this more often, which yes. I'm happy to do, yeah. okay, are we going to end up getting the things in chat for inspiration? Uh, if people That's come into chat and they want to give you inspiration and they want to spend divinity points to give you inspiration, I'm okay with that. We are streaming, so... We can farm cool. it yeah. ourselves. Yeah, so you can farm your own no, inspiration. Can, like, time to make 10 accounts. <laughs> I will say that... Yeah, right, you'll start fucking making sock accounts. Um, I, I will say that the more that the audience gives you inspiration, the less likely I am to, because I won't need to. Mm. Um, okay, so I'm thinking we're going to go to Robert Hartley, GM. Yeah. I, I know this guy. He's, he's an awesome dude and a great role player. I have role played with him in a face-to-face -face game um, at Spookers a few weeks back, and he was Ooh, very cool. great. Yeah. Here we go. So over to Robert Hartley. And Yo, like that, <laughs> we were gone, yeah. I believe. Oh, we're, we're gone. Got, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Out of there. Oh, oh. But by the way, um, next yeah. week I'm going to be late as well. Okay, mm -hmm. no worries. So just... that's going to make things interesting. I just dropped you off at Jazan. That just disappeared. That's all right. We can, if necessary, do flashbacky things or stuff like that, if necessary. Um, it will work. It will be fine. Keep it in mind, though. Thank okay. you. All right, guys. Have a good night and love you all. Should we hang out in the chat? chat? Feel free yeah, to hang yeah. out in yeah. the Discord yeah. chat. Yeah. I will not be there, but I will catch up with you all later. Catch right, you. Bye. 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 -bye.